second delay or something between the start of the show and when the countdown started going on the screen here and I think it might have even interrupted the intro song as well. Did you guys notice that? Yeah, it's it weird. That's very weird. I don't know what's going on with Blog Talk tonight, man. It's very strange. Very strange. Uh, I guess it's you know strange things have happened tonight, you know, pay-per-view night. <laughs> yeah. Elimination Chamber. Oh yeah. We're trying to, oh, we're trying yeah. to eliminate our intro. It's not cool. What do you guys think of it tonight? Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> I think Mike's having some um, troubles. Uh, he uh, dropped off for a second. He couldn't hear anything. He's going to call back in, it looks like. <clears throat> oh, okay. So um, we're going to jump I, on you first here. That's what they always do. Um, I will admit there's two matches I did not see. But from what I did see, I would give it a, I'd give it a B. Um, but I think the power... I think the power of the Elimination Chamber match is what made it a solid B. Or, yeah. or not a solid B, but at least a B. Yeah, um, I definitely loved the final match. That was awesome. I mean, uh, um, it's kind of like you said earlier to me uh, in, in, in a private message. You know, the whole thing could have sucked, but the Elimination Chamber match itself was worth the wait. Yeah, exactly. And I was the only thing that bothered me is they got rid of the greats. And I understand that for the safety reasons and everything, but yeah, it's another PG kind of move. Um, yeah. And I like that they squared off the boxes, but the plexiglass, that's another thing. It, before it was glass or like at least a harder plastic. Um, yeah, so that, that was kind of weak. It did, yeah, because when, when Corbin did what he did, it was his moment to do it, regardless of whether I liked him or not. Um, it didn't make him look strong. People were like, oh. And then yeah. my stepson, who hasn't watched wrestling in years, was like, oh, okay. Oh, oh it's, it was so scary, that whole plexiglass thing. I thought the same thing. Out. That's funny you said that. It did not make him look strong when that happened. I mean, he was. they did enough throughout the match whenever he got to come out where he was doing his own thing for a bit and made him look strong against these you know, more top-end people than what he, he, he is yeah. and everything. But at the same mm-hmm. time, that weak plastic look of going through that supposed plexiglass window was just awful. I don't know. Mike, can you hear us now? Yeah, your your attempts at sabotage have been futile, Chris Adams. <laughs> man, I tried. You can't blame a guy for trying, man. I know you. You're going to have negativity. You got the power of negativity tonight. I feel it in you. Well, here's the thing, Mike, is that I had tried. I tried to be the voice of reason. I was the angel on his shoulder, but it was to no avail. I'm just well, Chris, Chris is a heartless bastard. We know this. He's the kind of guy that pulls the wings off flies while, they, while they're still alive and nails frogs to boards. That's the kind of person you're dealing with with Chris Adams. Yeah. And he's That's hey, I'm going to claim it. Yeah. Yeah, but see, and he's also cheap because he tried to do it. He tried to get me silenced for ten dollars. I was like, really? That's what hey, I, mean, I mean. Hey, no, that I mean, no, I mean, I was really. That was between but, us. He only offered me That's five. So. Oh, you're 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 a cheap dude. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, if you will, sir. No. Pass your negativity yeah. onto the crowd. I know you got some things you didn't like about it, and while you're doing that, I'm gonna go to our caller on the on the on the hold here for a second. Okay, go ahead. All right. So the the elimination chamber match itself, the negative things I have to say about it is some of the participants just didn't make sense. It didn't make sense for Dean Ambrose to be in the elimination chamber. He should have been defending the Intercontinental Title against uh, someone, probably 
I don't anybody on the roster. He shouldn't have been in the match. It does it didn't make sense to me. That title should have been defended. It's just like the US title. He he got it and he never defended it. And I see yeah. the same thing happening with the uh with the Intercontinental Championship. He should not have been in that match. He should have been defending that title and one of those three god awful women's matches should have been bumped. I listen, I could not agree more with that. The only thing is it's the WWE um, uh, thought process is, hey, let's take some, let's take a, a, a weird event or a, a good event, put it in weird circumstances, and then go, oh, this makes sense, you know, like like some of the, well, yes. the we, things we, that were we going know. on, you know, Royal Rumble and all that stuff. So yeah, we we, yeah, we know the WWE around. creative is like an orangutan trying to beat a square peg into a round hole. It's like, it doesn't fit. we got to make it fit. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey Chuck, I, I've, I've um, got something that's going to be shocking tonight. Shocking. No, no, tell me. No, tell me, tell me, tell me that it's not I actually, like it is. I actually agree with Mike. Oh, I thought it was <clears throat> a caller that I thought. Oh, oh, no, we're getting to that and shortly. We're getting to that shortly. Uh-huh. But I had to get, to get this out of the way first. I uh, I agree with Mike. Dean Ambrose should not have been in the match. He should have been defending that belt. I understand he's probably one of the top end people in SmackDown Live right now. And that's why they put him in there. But at the same time, I can't I can't help but feel like they should have had him defending that title against somebody. You know, maybe had a maybe they should have worked up the, the match between Baron Corbin for that title and left him two out. But who are the other two people uh-huh. they could have put in? I don't know. And the women's match as far as the three it matches. Should've... They could have dropped the whole Becky Lynch and Mickey James match that I'll admit I was looking forward to at first. I wasn't a fan of it. It made no sense. It made zero sense whatsoever. The match wasn't I, I, that great. No, they just have a good flow to it. But, Mike, who do you think they should have put in the Elimination Chamber if you took out Corbin <laughs> and you took out uh, Ambrose and, and you had them in an the Intercontinental title match together? Who were the other two you would have put in? Uh, one of them would have been Luke Harper. But and he was squaring off against Randy Orton, though. He, he wouldn't have been. Because Orton would have been wouldn't have been on this card, he wouldn't have. I mean, he make to have him on. He's already set for WrestleMania. He should have just. It should have been a buy. He should have had a spot maybe. But one gotcha. of them, one of them would have been. Uh, one of them would have would have definitely been Luke Harper. Uh, the other one, I'm really not sure. <laughs> I mean, if you're going over as, as far as top names go, you probably would have had to throw Ziggler back in the mix as much as we didn't want to. You might have had to put Ziggler back in there because, I mean, really and truly though, you had to get some kind of closure to that Ziggler, Apollo Cruz, and and Callisto bit that was going on. And then they didn't give any closure to him and Apollo Cruz either. They would him uh, doing what he did to Apollo Cruz at the end of that match. So that's going to continue on from there. I just did don't you know who, that, the who the sixth person could have been. I did, yes. Okay, I want to discuss that for a moment because it seems to me like they're building Mojo Rawley for a push. And he had a pretty good match. It really was a pretty good match. It, it, it could have been in James and started the pay-per-view off on a better note than that match did. Yeah, I mean, they could have, definitely. And, and, and I'm, I'm not, you know, Mojo Rawley. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of him just yet. I mean, I don't. Maybe I haven't seen him enough. Uh, he to me, he's crazy in a tag match. But I don't know. Maybe he'll, he'll get better as an individual. I would rather watch, uh, you know, his his tag partner Zach Ryder as, as an individual than I would him. But maybe he'll, you know, you know, grow on me eventually. I don't know. Well, unfortunately, poor Zach is injured, so he won't be playing for a while. But I, I will say this though: but we do have we we do have some more intelligent minds out there that want to uh, get their thoughts in on this, and we do have a caller on the line who is just raring to go. I mean, he's waited so long; hair has reappeared back on his head. We're talking the Lex Luthor of Body Slam the Competition. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you just you just used intelligent and Tim in, in the same sentence. Are you drunk? Yeah, Chris what Adam? the hell, dude? Let's, let's, uh, I had to build him up. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. It, this 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 the thing was I actually missed almost the entire elimination chamber match, which really pissed me off. I got to see the rest of that wonderful pay per view, Jay. You know. <laughs> So you're saying that overall you're not a huge fan of the pay-per-view tonight? 
No, honestly, I yeah, on, yeah. The first match on the the first match between um the um the ladies was not horrible. I don't I don't think it was that bad. It could have been done differently. I'm not a big fan of somebody basically doing one move and winning. Which is also what pissed me off about the tag team match. Basically, you know, guys, you know, they give you the ascension with one move, and that just that just irritates the shit out of me. I hate that kind of stuff. It's, it look makes it, it makes team division look terrible. You know, again, um, I think with the uh, I like I, I missed the Bray Wyatt came in the other ring, and then my um, then my son and he's like, yeah, and, was, and yeah, that's that's what I saw. You know, so I missed the whole elimination chamber match. Anything that really mattered. Uh, I would say you missed um, the best part of the show. I'm not trying to rub it in or anything, but yeah. you did miss the best oh, part. I, of the I, show. I, I already know. Yeah, but, yeah I know. Uh, I'm, you know, it's funny. I'm actually, you know, I don't know if you what you guys said about this, but I'm at that uh, Naomi won the uh, women's championship. You know, she, I, you know, I think she has the potential to be really, really good. I think it may give her the opportunity to showcase that ability. You know. But we haven't really said anything about it yet. Uh, we haven't really built our way up to it. I mean, I, you know, personally, I'm an Alexa Bliss fan. I, I have not hidden that fact or anything. I'm a oh. fan, but but Naomi is a very great a great athlete. She's a good wrestler. I enjoy watching her out there as well. And she's got this yeah, thing she can, you know, that she can push out there with the fan base. So, you know, the whole glow thing she's got going on is entertaining. When she, her, her entrance is entertaining when she comes out there, no doubt. I'm not a big fan of the finishing move. You know, I mean, that's more of a mid-match kind of move like Rob Van Dam used to do more than anything to me. I mean, it's not really a finishing move, but that is her ender, and that's what it is. So, Did, did you also kind of mess that up? Because basically she drove a freaking yes. to Alexa Bliss. I, oh, I know that. Yeah. But um, mm-hmm. one, of the, one of my I, – I was on Twitter for, throughout the whole thing. And one, of the, one of the things I put in there is if you ever want to look at a heel – how a heel should act, look at Alexa Bliss. I was cracking up when she, when the rest like, you can't stand on her hair, and she screams at him, I know! I was like, yes! I just loved it. What she lacks in, in actual wrestling in-ring ability, she makes up for in, in mic skills and in working the crowd and, and, and that kind of thing. But, but, yeah, but exactly. Listen, She's awesome. But that's, what, that's my problem with the Alexa Bliss um, Naomi thing. It, it's it's a weird dichotomy because that's exactly it. Naomi is a better athlete. She's a better wrestler, um, but she can't talk on the mic. Whereas, whereas on the opposite side with Alexa Bliss, she can't really wrestle that well. But man, does she have a big personality? And she do, and she is a heel heel. Doesn't matter whether it's man or woman. She knows how to get people angry at her. She you know talks I mean? during the match. She I will. Talks I will. Yeah. I want to. It's like she trash. She, she trash talks with Mike throughout the whole thing, and that's that's a really good thing about it. That, it is. It's great. I want to correct you, KJ, because of course you know you've made an error, agree egregious error. Oh, there we fucking go. Yeah, she really isn't that great of a wrestler. Now, when she's in the <laughs> ring with Alexa Bliss, of course she looks better. <clears throat> well, but no, if you stuck her in still. the ring, if you stuck her in the ring with Natty, or even Nikki Bella, she's going to fall short. Both of which can actually talk on the mic. I and I, that's I, the no, problem but, I have. Okay, one of those two no. should have been the one that won the title tonight, not Naomi. It should well, have been Natty. She's put in the time. She has the talent, and that's Nat, just Natty's how I feel actually about one of the best wrestlers in, in WWE, in my opinion. One of the best actual wrestlers. Well, no. what I was saying was I was comparing comparatively. I meant. To, we're, we're comparing. I was comparing to Alexa Bliss. Comparatively, she's a better wrestler. Okay. Uh, you I'll understand you what I mean? I'll Comparatively. I'll give you um, and she has. A, she, the thing is, she's very athletic, but she has a lot of work to do in the ring. The reason that she looks great is because she's athletic. She can do the high spots. But and here's the thing. Like I wouldn't mind seeing Natty. Uh, uh, Natty have a title, but they need to make her, they need to continue to give it. It's hard for me to see her as a heel because she's so likable. Like, regardless, right. I, it's hard for me. To, don't You can't tell me that she's a heel. Like, regardless of what you do, you can't. Like, she's, all she comes off is a little bitchy. 
I, I could see the I could I could see it's funny because I could see um, Nikki being more of a heel. Even when she was walking down and she was saying hi to her fans, she wouldn't go near them to touch them and all that other stuff. She was like, "Hey, oh, here's my shirt." Hey, the whole time walking down, I'm like, "She's this. She's an idiot. She's an asshole." Well, you know, she was you know heel I mean? before, but that year she had the title, Chuck. So she can definitely yeah, play the heel. And, I mean, she she yeah, was no, a believable heel too for Raw. I mean, the whole time she was believable. I mean, Natalie, right. uh, I'm sorry, Natalie, Natty, Natalia, like you said, is not very believable as a heel. She's about as believable mm-hmm. as a heel as Ricky Steamboat being a heel. We know that never oh, happened. Oh my God! I mean, well, can you, you, you know what? They did do that. that. They did. They did have that happen. They did have that I happen. Was, but he was when he was a manager. He tried to be a man, like a GM, like in, in this old federation. They tried to have him be heel. It was so freaking unbelievable. It was terrible. Man, was terrible. I never he seen that. <laughs> I never did. Yeah, I swear to that, you. I swear to you, it happens. That, that would have been humorous that, to me, if anything, at best. That would have no, been humorous. It was, no, it I can't, was painful. I can't it wasn't humorous. Him heel. I, no, I, you it just wasn't humorous. Picture him. I know. No, I mean, I'm I know. just saying. I mean, it's just it's humorous in the fact that you can't picture him being a heel in any way. And then you see, you know, Natty come out there after all this time of her being, you know, at, as a face wrestler and everything. When we uh-huh. were Charlotte had their little bit going on. And then now you see her trying to be a heel against Nikki. And it's just not working out for her very well. Uh, well, I, I, exactly. the okay. thing with Natty is, the thing with Natty is that she's actually she's she's one of the most the most solid wrestlers they have. Period. So it it basically kills it, yeah. it, it kills the whole image, and she is likable. You're right. I I love her. I think that she should be the women's champion, personally, because I don't think there's a woman on the roster that could on on, on SmackDown anyway that could touch her as a wrestler. You know, that's just my opinion. No, it's a it's a valid opinion. It's a very very <laughs> valid opinion. Um, I I've kind of lost respect for um for Becky Lynch. I just don't think she she's main event material. Um, she nope. showed it tonight, and she has shown it. And I've tried to give her a chance, and it can't happen. Can I just say one thing, and then I won't say anything for 20 minutes? I really, I'm seriously. Um, the reason why on Facebook I, I that I put um, David Otunga needs to shut the hell up is because how many times in that fucking match between uh, um, um, Lynch and um, Mickey James, did he say, well, she's been gone for seven years. She's been gone for seven years. She has ring rust. Where the fuck do you think she was, dude? Sitting on the goddamn couch? She wasn't on TNA? She wasn't, like, did, doing, did, doing other stuff? I mean, did, did, didn't you hear JPL finally just say, dude, she's been wrestling all over the world? He finally yep. said that. <laughs> hey, crazy Chris. stuff. He's crazy Chris. stuff. You got another uh, caller on the line, Chris. I see that, Uh-oh. and you know, I did send you a quick message to ask you about said caller on the line, since I was not exactly sure. But I can go ahead if you like and bring him in. To bring him in now. Now, hold on now, now. Hold on now. Before I bring him in now, does he have a valid statement to make, oh, or, does no. to yell, or, or does he just want to yell "free bird" all night? Does Does anybody? Is, no, not that Ray. Not a that Ray. Ray. Okay. Okay. I was thinking it was that Ray. Okay. My bad. This must be the other Ray, and I will bring him on. Hold on. Ray. My brother from another mother. This this is the, this is the one with uh, a little bit of wrestling knowledge. This is that Ray. No. That Ray. Oh, yeah, see, that's oh, why I said this must oh, be the oh. other Ray calling in. See, look here. Now, what do we do to deserve this? But, I mean, we got we got Rob, and now we got the Ray. Hello, oh, Ray. I I, I, I just enjoyed I enjoyed the pay per view. Um, I enjoyed. See, if y'all remember the last uh, what was that Royal Rumble when everybody was so upset and butthurt and I, you know my motto, Chris, let the yeah. story play out. Right. There's a That's reason things saying. are happening. You saw so what happened Monday tonight. night, the following night after. What happened? Exactly. So you, the story is playing out now. Now you, now you're getting some momentum for WrestleMania with the Bray and uh, um, Randy Orton match. And there was a reason we won the Royal Rumble. I mean, I'm that? actually really excited about this Bray Wyatt Randy Orton idea. <laughs> I think now, what about the end of match. that match? Though, I, I mean, now uh, Tim didn't get to see the end of the match, Ray. But what do you think about the end of the the end of the match of the uh, Elimination Chamber when Randy Orton was Chucky. out there staring down at the ring? 
Yeah, I thought it was, it was great storytelling when Randy Orton came back out there. You know, you, I mean, first of all, we knew when they first put Randy Orton with the Wild Family that that wasn't going to last long in the first place. Right. So they, now they got a way to break them up and putting the title on Bray, which I've been saying all for like the last year to give that man a title. But put him, you've been, put that you've title been yelling up, that longer than a year, I think, probably. Yeah, I, 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 finally they listened. But, um, you know, putting that title on Bray, and then now you got Randy Orton coming. You know, that's part of the Wild Family that's teasing them to break up because, like I said, they, you know that wasn't going to last long. That's going to be a damn good match at WrestleMania. In my yes. Opinion. Yes. And, and plus, it's a, it's a match you really haven't seen. Like, I don't think they've wrestled each other before. I'm not too. Like, they had their matches when they first started feuding, but it was all smoke and mirror matches. You know what I'm saying? This is going to be a really good match at WrestleMania. Same thing is that uh, Randy Orton is, in my opinion, I think he's actually a quality wrestler. I, I know there's some people. I know Chuck's not a big fan of him, and but I, I love Bray Wyatt. I think that that guy could do a lot of special things in the ring. That's just me personally. Yeah, they both have. Like, I'm, a, I'm a fan of like uh, Jake Roberts and Undertaker and all. And no, I'm a fan of them not only because of the way they wrestle, but they have good ring psychology. And they tell good stories in the ring. And Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton, I'm sorry, that is not many people are probably going to overlook that match because they're looking at the Goldberg and, and, and Lesnar match or whoever Undertaker is going to wrestle. But that match might actually steal the show at WrestleMania. I hope it does. I hope it does. It should. It should. I cannot be happier. You should have seen me on that thing that I did on Facebook. Um, you should have seen me. I, if I could break dance without breaking something, I would have. <laughs> I swear to God. Because I, you, ask, you ask these other three. I have been waiting for Bray Wyatt to, to have a, a title for as long as I can remember. He should, you know, I understand he's hurt. I understand he got, you know, he was messed up and everything like that. But now that he's not, now that he's healthy, they should have him, and I hope they do, they should have him hold the WWE hostage with that title. Like, they can't just make it a storyline. They have to make it where he takes over the WWE. I just think that the, because he's he's that much of a, a devious mind. Like, uh, uh, that's just I how agree, I, I, I... I agree with you to a point. And the point is, sometimes WWE can go a little too far and it turns into like a, like a hokey type, type of thing. And yeah. With Bray, with the Bray Wyatt character, you don't want to like when when he had the whole like the crowd coming coming with the choir coming out. And yeah. Singing, he got the whole. I don't want it to go back cool. to that direction. It was cool, but I, I you know he's kind of evolved from that now. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not all like hocus pocus type stuff with him now. Like he, he, he like he's actually performing like and he's telling more of a story in the ring. Instead of telling the story with like the, I forgot what match he had where the television exploded and he had the hologram and all that stuff. Like no, he, I, he, and he, I agree. I, I agree. I agree. That's what I'm saying is you can go about it another way. You can you he could take over the, the 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 that way without being mystical. He could still play mind games. He doesn't have to have that mystical thing, which I think cheapens the character to a little bit. Because after a while, you're like, okay, we get it. The rocking chair goes by itself. Ha ha ha. You know what I mean? Right. But I will right, say right. this. I'm going to say this, and yes, I'm going to shock the world for those who know how I feel about this character. But Barry Corbin looked great tonight. I'm, I'm going to say it, man. He looked great tonight. I hate him, and I'm always going to hate him, probably, but I think he did great tonight. So kudos uh, to him. So I'm, I'm, got a bear, I, I'm a Barry gotta, Corbin fan from, from back in NXT days, and he was just, just beating up everybody in NXT. So I'm, he did look great. I, my only problem is I think they kind of hurt him putting him in this match because he kind of got overshadowed by AJ, by John, by, by um, Bray Wyatt. He kind of, kind of hurt him a little bit. <laughs> but he had that. But he had that thing though for a bit where he was just running wild, and they made him look strong over people who were. And, and, you know, and of that's course, the, that's that's the, 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 the way they put the way they push him, Braun Strowman, make right. him a monster, make him beat is the way they should have had Baron Corbin come in. <laughs> but he's not as believable as a monster. Hold on, hold on. That's is. not the same. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> He's a intimidating looking guy. He's lanky. He's impressive. I think we lost him. 
I think yeah, we did. He's all I, I think I know what he was saying. It'd be like trying to push Big Cass as a monster. Because when yeah, I look I mean, at Baron Corbin, I see Big Cass with a with a hairline that's more receding. Well, well see, you got to get. But Baron Corbin is a little bit more athletic. He can do a lot more in the ring than, than Big Cass can. Come on now. Like well, Big, Big yeah, Cass, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, because he's, he's not as big. He's not as big as Cass. Well, Cass yeah. is what seven seven foot seven foot even or seven foot. No, he's, like he's he's actually six six ten. They they put him. He said it already. He said I'm not exactly that tall. But he, mm-hmm. he said, but it's for close to it. I mean, right. uh, Big Show's not exactly 7'2". I think he's 7' foot even, actually. Yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, real quick, is that Baron Corbin doesn't come off as somebody... Okay, Undertaker walks in, you know somebody's getting their ass kicked. Uh, Big Show's coming in, you know you're getting your ass kicked. Braun Strowman walks in, you know you're getting your ass kicked. Baron Corbin doesn't have that intensity. He looks exactly. like he's... He, looks, he, he doesn't look mad. Dude, he looks irritated. He, he walks in and you wonder. Hey, would, you, would you say it's because of the way they brought him in? Like they they, no. they made him look. No. Because no. Because like I said, no. in, 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 in NXT, he had, he had he had everything you said he doesn't have now. He had that in, in NXT. That's because he, he was that. in NXT. Real quick. Real That's real because quick. of where he was at. Because now when he walks in, you wonder who ordered pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another thing. I mean, I just bring this up. Okay. I didn't even know that he was coming to the ring. I mean, this is the first time I've seen him real quick. I think that he has one of the better entrances in wrestling right now in WWE. His entrance uh-huh. is awesome, but he just isn't. You know? I call him Baron Cardboard. I, I, I call him Boring Corbin. <laughs> I'm going to say it tonight. Mark my words. Tonight, I'm saying that he will be the Intercontinental Champion. I don't know how many weeks it'll be, if it'll go all the way to WrestleMania or what, but he's going to be the Intercontinental Champion soon. Uh, all right. right. If, 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 I don't, I don't doubt that for a second. If, I, if I'm sitting backstage, if I'm, like, got some type of creative uh, position or whatever, and, I, and, and Baron Corbin is my project, I erase everything and start from scratch with him. I don't do all that shit. I, I won't. I won't even put him in Andre. Uh, Andre by the Royal. I wouldn't even put him in that. I would just bring that dude in and just have him like like he did Dolph Ziggler and just beat the hell out of him because that was believable. The dude is athletic. He he can move. He's not stiff. He's not robotic like Big Cass is and all that. Stuff. He can actually move. I would let him beat himself and be a legit badass and just. And they gotta so, drop that thing about the Andre the Giant tournament. Well, what, my question for you is this: What what do you do though? What you have? To... Well, the one Timmy broke up, Tim. Timmy what, broke up. Yeah, Tim. Hey, yeah. your first what, bill, what Tim. Did, <laughs> what do you do with him when he has to talk? I mean, I don't think he's all that great anyway. You you work with him. You improve him. Well, you what, 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 yeah. Just like you got to do with a whole bunch of other people. You, 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 you know you, you know what I do. You, you know what I do. I stick him underneath. The Undertaker learning tree. I put him with Taker, not on screen, but backstage, and let and just let Tell Taker work with that guy. And well, Taker, didn't, he, he, but, but Taker didn't, didn't talk for himself for ten he, years. Taker, that, he was already Taker established is a great by the time talker that, anyway. Yeah, by the time they set, set Taker loose, he was already established, and all he had to do was come I'm out. Not, with, I'm not talking I'm not, I'm not about. I'm not talking about just talking. I'm talking about character development. I'm talking about overall. Oh, uh, okay. I think yeah. that's real, real quick. Yeah. No, I hear you. But, but you can't fake charisma. You can't fake a personality. You can't teach exactly. this guy how to have a personality. He's going to be boring. He needs a mouthpiece. Listen, they listen, don't have a mouthpiece Tim. anymore. Tim. Well, Tim. Here's, 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 guys, here's guys, a good Tim. Here's the thing. Listen to me. Here's the thing. If you look at anything that The Undertaker did before he got to WWE and he was Undertaker, when he was Mark Calloway and all those guys, he wasn't a great mouthpiece. He, wasn't, he didn't have a lot of per- personality. He really didn't. He was a big man. When he, came, when he came to the WWF is when he, and he just started to develop, then yes, he developed a personality. So I don't necessarily believe that. Right now, as it, as it stands, that guy is like a broom with the mic. When I was watching Watching him on oh, commentary God. and right. hearing him on commentary, I was like, "Please, really?" Like, KJ, hey, I, KJ, quick, KJ, KJ breathe, breathe, KJ, breathe, hey. because Tim, I'm hey, going to hey. tell him how it is. I'm going to tell him. 
Do you remember, I, I, when, I, I, the, I, I, do you remember when The Undertaker debuted at Survivor Series? I was a young uh, little child. Of course. His gimmick. I remember that very His gimmick busy. was yeah. an undead zombie. That was his gimmick. How much personality yeah. do you have to, to have to play somebody that's fucking dead? Yeah, he had uh, well, he well, had he had uh, Paul Bearer, one of the greatest talkers. He didn't have Paul. He didn't have Paul Bearer. He had the Million Dollar Man, and then he had Brother Love, and oh, yeah, then he had, had Paul Bearer. Hold on, also, well, all three of them talkers. Well, 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 well Ray maybe... wants to talk, bitches. Yeah, let Ray talk. What's wrong with you? Why are you gonna do that? Go ahead. Well, Undertaker debut. I was on my way to middle school. Okay, I was growing up in a not so nice neighborhood, and every one of my friends who saw Undertaker debut, when I looked at them and they looked at me, and we all of us was just looking at the TV screen like, where the we knew who he was, but it took a while to like to, to put the face with the name. Oh, that's the guy from you know uh, uh, the skyscrapers. But we were like, dude, that that dude is like he's about to kill someone, and and Did we you? were going to middle school. So it, he had he had he had us look like a sinker when he when we first walked in. Now, Roddy Piper kind of like in his own little way gave it away of, of who he was and what it, what it was all about when he said certain things. Because my family is just a wrestling family. We we videotape everything that came on television, pay per views, classes, champions, all that. We videotape all that. So we kind we we had to put the face like it took us a minute, but when we saw him, we were like, dude, like he's about to kill someone. That's a big, scary-looking son of a bitch. Yeah, I, I don't know about anybody else, but that's how we took him when we first came in. When he Look, when we first I'm going to tell you guys something oh, about man. what Ray's trying to say here. And I agree with Ray when what he said about taking him backstage under his wing to teach him some things. And it's, it's true, yeah. you can't teach charisma. There's no doubt about that. You're either charismatic no, or you're okay. not, really. But right. you can teach a personality. You can teach a character that somebody uh-huh. would portray. And all he has to do is teach him how to bring that air about him when he goes out into the camera, how to make that character stand out to the crowd and how to make it believable. Uh-huh. He doesn't have to be a Dusty Rhodes Absolutely. yelling, you know, or a Ric Flair yelling woo and Dusty Rhodes yelling getting funky like a monkey and yelling oh yeah and stuff like that. All he has to do is go out there, be himself, just some, just talk some like a brain psychology, guy, a little, a little twist in here, and some little nuances and, 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 and you know, take a it's, and the only reason I say Taker is because Taker is a big guy, and he and if anybody knows how to get a big guy over, it would be Taker. That's back yep. right now. Mm-hmm. Or, and look what they're currently is. doing. Look what they're currently doing with the Ascension right now. I, I, I don't know if they'll mm-hmm. ever recover. Period. I really don't. But yeah, look, that was when they terrible. were in NXT, that was when they were terrible. in NXT, they're supposed to be dominant in NXT, right? Then they come up, but they're a <laughs> bunch of Road Warrior ripoffs yelling how they can beat all the legends. Well, now they've taken them off main TV for a while for the most part. They show up every now and then in these big Royal Rumble type tag team matches. We're not a Royal Rumble, but a big gigantic, you know, um, battle Royal tag team match of some sort where like there's 500 people out there. But now they've kept them off long enough to the point where they bring them out there and they got a little bit of a different look to them, a little bit of a different feel. And I don't know if they'll keep evolving it from there, but Uh they've made them feel more... Destructive is not the word I'm looking for. They've, they've made them look stronger to me and feel like they're more like they were in NXT, and they might can now, build more on that. Will they do it? Another story. I, I look at this. I look at this last match and the fact that Deuce did, did a couple of moves to them and they were done. That's that's to me everything what they think of the ascension. I, yeah, I wonder if that's because they had the match, though, because they just had you this tag team turmoil match where they had all these people come out. And those out were the last the two guys quarter. in the ring. But you've but you got to cut it short at some point in time, though. I know they're fresh coming in. What was the what was the move that got them? Because I, I'd leave the room for a second. I know well, I'm it, sure it's it was the their, usual uh, finish. finisher or whatever it's called. I'm sure it's the usual finish, but, you know, th- that goes back to the argument we made along, you know, all these past, you know, pay, uh, not pay per but past uh, podcasts. When a finisher gets put on, that needs to be it anyway. If they look out with that finisher, great. Now, that's why I'm complaining about how, and I'm not saying they want Ascension to be the tag team champion necessarily, but they come down there after the Usos beat the crap out of American Alpha and left them laying and put their move on them, and they get to kick out. But as soon as they put the, uh, they, they flip the script and put their finisher out, they get the pin. So it should have gone yeah. the same both ways. Ascension technically should have been tag team champions. Well, that, 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 exactly. My thing is, what if they were fresh? What if the, the Ascension came down 
and the uh, you know American Alpha was fresh. You know what I mean? Like it, it was just this whole thing boggles the mind. You give you give these kids coming up from NXT that were whooping ass this bullshit road warrior demolition um, image and gimmick. You throw them out there and say, "Hey boys, do what you do," right? So then they were like, well, they probably were like, "Hey dudes, can we can we get rid of this and do something else?" Like, oh, okay, sure. You still gotta use makeup. And you're like, okay, but um, what we're gonna do is after we fuck you, we're gonna put you in the this match where you're not gonna win. We're going to make it look like you guys are going to win. You guys should, in all intents and purposes, win the title, but you're not going to do that. Have fun. It's terrible. Well, let me tell you, this is my view on the Ascension. When they came over from NXT, the moment they hit the ring, JBL went out back, got the biggest fucking shovel he could find, and started burying their ass. I don't know why. I don't know if they told it's him not to him. do that. It was, it's I don't not know, him. I don't know he if they told him to do it. That. No, they, he doesn't know. take care of WWE. He takes care of NXT. He has nothing to do with the main roster in, in Raw. His, his JBL, business. JBL on JBL on, on the announce team. That's who did it because as soon as they hit the ring, he started talking about them like they were a joke. The moment they debuted. And I know for me sitting at home as a fan, he, does, he does that to everybody coming up. Yeah, he does. But it, <laughs> he does it, it resonated with back? me more because it was just every time he hammered and hammered and hammered and hammered. And you looked at him and you said, yeah, you know, he's right. And that's why it worked because he was right. It, it was just mm-hmm. a cheap rip off, but demolition was just a cheap rip off. And. Well, we, we've had that discussion before on here. So. Yeah, let's not talk about demolition. Let's talk about demolition. Yeah. Yeah, let's not get me going on it. Nope. All right. But I do have another gripe that I want to Go bring ahead. up because you know me. Yeah. I love to gripe. So, I know. Okay. So what was the fucking point of two weeks ago John Cena win the title for the 16th time just to drop it to Bray Wyatt at the next pay-per-view? Well, Why couldn't easy. they have just let the style – have because, it. Cena, because Cena's going to break that record. That's why. And they, and he got the cheap 16th victory to tie it. Eventually, he'll get a cheap a 17th win to break he, it. He got, we, oh, I, yeah. I knew when when when, when, that, when the referee's hand hit three for that AJ Styles John Cena match, the John Cena won that title. I told Rob he ain't going to have it for long. He's going to lose it probably at the next pay per view so he can get uh-huh. that title back and break the record. That's the first thing That's- I said to Rob. Just the same, mm-hmm. Maybe I can get lucky forget. and he'll have some sort of accident that keeps him from wrestling but doesn't really cause him any permanent damage. Mm-hmm. Like, like what, um, like what uh, Daniel Bryan has where he can still do things? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, want, I don't want the poor guy to become like draws or anything, but, mm-hmm. you know, no. Can we be what? real for a minute? And, 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 and I forgot who said it. Uh, was it Lance Storm? If I could be fair for a moment. Let's be honest. We knew five, six, seven years ago that John Cena was going to break Ric Flair's record. Uh-huh. He still hasn't broken Ric Flair's record. I thought it was going to be Triple H, honestly. I thought it was going to be Triple H. Because he had once, more teeth once, once, once I saw Triple H started to, to ease back on wrestling a little bit, I figured it wasn't going to be him. It was going to be John Cena. And... and and I can't really be too mad at John Cena. Like, I mean, who else? Who else will break? Who, if, if, if I put it like this: If Ric Flair is okay with it, who am I to say it shouldn't happen? And Ric Flair yeah. has pushed it. He has. He has went out there and said that if he was to pass that torch on to anybody today that's doing it right now, he would would be John Cena because he's the one that's like the face of the company, pretty much. You know, he's, he's the one that all the kids that love. For the last, he's been turning that company for the last ten years. Yeah, but that's not – here's the thing. I think he deserves it. Everybody's going to say the boo, boo, boo. Who else do you think is going to deserve it more than him and, or possibly Triple H? There isn't anybody. Kurt it's Angle. It's got to be him. What? Uh, Kurt, Kurt Angle. Angle. If Kurt, if, if Kurt Angle hadn't here. been shit on by the WWE, no, no, no. they'd have pushed him. I, I don't know about that. Kurt, Kurt, I don't, Kurt, I don't Angle, stop. Kurt Angle stop. did that to himself. 
Kurt Angle did yeah, that exactly. to himself. Yeah, exactly. Knock it off. Stop. He did you, that to you leave that out of there. We're talking about in the, the, who's been in the WWE. It wasn't going to be The Rock. He went off to be an actor and star, and there's nothing wrong with that. What well, yeah, but Rick Flair's, Rick Flair's titles aren't WWE titles anyway. Yeah, well, yeah, there's, there's, a, there, there's a reason why Kurt Angle wasn't in the WWE. They didn't decide to let him go. He fired him that his damn self. Mm-hmm. He, so he, he, he pulled a Brock. He did the same thing. Brock, him and Brock did the same thing. They wanted out of their contract, and they left. And he went to and, TNA, and, 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 and that was it. For Kurt, Kurt went somewhere where they would allow him to, and I'm glad he got himself cleaned up, but he went somewhere where they allowed him to pop pills and get caught drunk driving, and they got uh-huh. him off the road. That's mm-hmm. why he went down there. He was, they mm-hmm. offered see, they offered Kurt a chance to clean himself up. Either you can clean yourself up or you gotta go. He you guys, that, you guys never he, uh, listened to that uh, when he was on the Stone Cold podcast and talking about that stuff? No, I missed it. No. Yeah, yeah, Kurt, Kurt Angle was on was on the pod, was on the Stone Cold podcast. He was talking about the, all the stuff that was wrong and the reason that he left WWE was the was the, the drug addiction and the alcohol and all this stuff that he was getting in trouble. And he didn't feel like he was performing well, so he needed to get out. If he could do what he was capable of. And then he, he took the time off, played himself up, and then went to the UK, and they got in trouble all over again. And he said it himself. He's like, I'm an idiot. Because Mama, <laughs> Mama Dixie allows foolishness. Well, well she you got to realize that they're... So look, at, look at all the crap that, uh, like, Superfly, when, when it was allowed. I mean, literally, they covered up on her... <laughs> yeah, it's a different did. era, you know. They cover yeah. up the murder, Hulk Hogan, all the freaking drugs and all the and all the steroids. Same thing with the Macho Man and all the other guys. You well, know, I'm, these, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm guys who like the WWE. Coke in the back in the back of the freaking uh, you know, you know, off the back of freaking hookers and shit. You know, well, I'm gonna I'm 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 repeat something that a, a, a w, actual WWE writer said on the podcast in the '80s. Everybody was doing it. Drugs. It was just it was just a different time. That's mm-hmm. my thing. And, oh, and yeah. as far as it, and as far as the Jimmy Snuka murder thing, whether only people who know what really happened is that woman that passed away, Jimmy Snuka, and Vince. And that radiator. And that red well <laughs> get the fuck out of it. There was a there was a story that Vince went into a, a meeting with a briefcase and, and he came out without a briefcase. I don't know how true that story is. You, you would have to question the person who put that story out there, but... <clears throat> the world will never know unless Vince loses his mind later and starts spilling so, everything. Yeah, so, I mean, I can't, I can't really... Mind, he done lost it. <laughs> I, can, I can't really say Jimmy, Jimmy Smith a murder, so I mean, I mean, let's, they, they reopened the case because some guy wrote a story about it. No, so they reopened the case because they found evidence. They, they, there was newfound evidence and what happened was that it's like... The, the the thing that he used to kill him, her kept found was uh was found at some cop's freaking house. Um, 30, 30 years later, they found they, I, I, that's a little. I, I, yeah, it's the, 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 the cop what, 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 that did what, what, the investigation what? and stuff had had like the actual thing at his house, and he had it like framed. With, with the no involvement shit. of crime, with the involvement of crime scenes and crime labs and technology and all that stuff, there there was none of that last thirty years ago. That's there what I'm saying. That's what like saying. With, the, with the involvement, they, if, that, if that's the case, they could have found that ten, fifteen years ago. Now that they were I mean, looking, I, now that they were looking at the police. I think what I think what Tim's saying is that he swiped it. He swiped it from the scene. He stole it and took yeah. it home. He and then the probably for soon, thirty years later. And, or was stupid, and the story came out and said, "Hey, I've got the murder weapon." That's how. It's, I mean, of course, that's never happened because well, he's dead, and who cares? You know, it's done. But, yeah, it well, so, yeah. that's one of the things we just never know. So, hey Ray, let's ask you a question yes, here. Um, we were talking about this earlier, and uh, Mike made a, a pretty good valid point about how Dean Ambrose should have been defending the Intercontinental Belt instead of participating in the Elimination Chamber match. And we were saying that maybe they should have had a Intercontinental title match between him and um, Baron Corbin instead. Now, if, if gone that way, 
uh, Mike's theory uh, was taking Luke Harper and putting him in the Elimination Chamber and not having the Randy Orton match and just sitting Orton out because of, you know, coming up to WrestleMania. Who would you have put in for the sixth person in that match, if you could think of somebody? I mean, on the SmackDown roster, pretty much the yeah. main players on the SmackDown on the, the main players on the SmackDown roster were off in the Elimination Chamber match. So it seems yeah, I mean, like, but I mean, if you were to go the other way, though, if you had to put a sixth person in there based on how it would have been set up at that point, who was your pick have been? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I, 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 I wouldn't say Ziggler because there's no, I mean, what, again, see, that, and that's what, this is what makes me so angry about the WWE Universe or the IWC or whatever you want to call them. If you put somebody in there, then they'll tell you, oh, well, there's no reason to put them in there. If you don't put them in there, then they want, to, they want them in there. So it's kind of like, you damn if you do, and you damn if you don't. Yeah. You know what I'm oh, yeah. If you put, well, if you put Ziggler in there, give, they'd be like, well, why the hell is Ziggler in there? Put him in there to bury him. You don't put him in there, and everybody's like, well, Ziggler should have Ziggler been in that match. This person, i tell you what, though. I would have loved to have found a replacement for Miz because I don't even know why he was in that match. I, I think it's because no, Miz, you know, they've been talking about the Miz getting a push here this year again, and it, there was a, a talk of possibly giving Miz another title push again because they said his work as a heel for the past year, they said it's been some of his best work he's done in a long time. That's just the word, Chris, anyway. Chris, Chris, remember we had a conversation about a year so a year and a half ago about uh, if what would happen if they, they they split the titles and do two titles again. Mm-hmm. Remember I said. Remember I said it will begin to be a clusterfuck because you got you got so many people and you can't bring everybody up from NXT and you can't go sign everybody from the independents and put them all in there at the same damn time. So you're gonna have these problems. What? They're having uh-huh. they're ha- they're having these problems right now. I kind of like it though. I mean, it's not as bad as I thought it would be when we had that talk. I don't remember the talk you're talking about too. I just don't think it's as bad as I thought it would have been at the time. It's, it's not as bad as I thought I mean, it would have been, but they, but then, like I said, you got you got people talking like like the rumor is uh, Ziggler's going to get a title push. I don't right. want to see Ziggler get. I mean, I mean not Ziggler, but uh, no. uh, Miz. I don't want to see Miz get a title push over. over but see, there's uh, a ton of other people do guys like that. There's a ton of other people that would love it, though. That's the whole thing. I mean, there, he's getting a lot of attention right now. People, are, A lot of fans are putting out there what the work he's doing. And it kind of reminds me of old school w, uh, the old school NWA, WCW, where Flair, you know, I know we always go back to our old school roots here, but, I mean, Flair, he had uh, a thing against Dusty for a while. Then there was no Dusty. Then it was like Ronnie Garvin. Then there's no Ronnie Garvin, and it's like Barry Windham. Then Barry Windham's no longer there. He's a horseman now. Well, now you got Flair gives Ricky Morton a chance, you know, for a few matches. He even gave, uh, I think, Jimmy Garvin a match or two, uh, Michael Hayes a match. I mean, he's going to these different people, and they, they, they rotate in and out, basically. I imagine what's going to happen they, here they, soon. But those people never, soon, those those people never really had a major track. title push, though. They never, those people right. never really had a, a major title run, if they even won a title at all. Like, I don't remember Ricky Morton winning a title. Before. They had a good no, team, he but. didn't. But, I mean, it's kind of reminded me of that in a way, though. I mean, if Miz gets a title run, don't mean he'll get the belt exactly. Well, now with you having Bray Wyatt getting it, the whole, you know, talk and rumor of Miz getting his run is either false or put on the shelf till later, if anything, if it happens. Because now you get a good a good run with Bray Wyatt coming up and I think it's gonna go well past WrestleMania. I don't know that well, I don't know that uh, Orton will win the belt from him or not. The way they need to build up Bray because Bray's been on the back burner for so long they got to give him that belt and leave it on him for a while, or the fans will definitely run. He, he, he's he's got to have it at least till WrestleMania. He's, he's right. oh, he's have have it, WrestleMania. If he don't have it longer than that, the fans will riot for sure. I mean, you know, they're <laughs> rioting for less in this world today. Why not riot for that as well? I'm sure they will. Well, you, well, you know how you know how I feel about finance, Chris. I, you know. Right. Re- wrestling fans are the most loyal, stupidest people in the world. Huh. And I'm a wrestling fan, and I and I, I'm not I'm not trying to talk. I, I, here's why I say that: because they ask for something, they get it, and then they complain about it. And, and that's they, the same. It, it, ne- it, 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 it never fails. It never fails. They, that's they kind of what I said for, earlier. Uh, yeah, I don't know they, if y'all they, saw it or not. Um, uh, a friend of all of ours, Douglas O'Shea, he got a post out there on Facebook, and somebody came on there and said, "Well." It looks like it's going to be a bunch of BS, but I'm going to watch it anyway. And I just started laughing to myself. So I jumped on there and typed, of course, you know, wrestling today, 
gets compared more and more to a soap opera, and I guess it's true. It's just a male version of the soap opera, like they always say, because the women sit around and complain. The women, yeah, the women sit around and complain about the storyline of this is going on, and uh, this person come back from the dead for the umpteenth time. You should have been killed a long time ago, and oh no, this one slept with that one, and I hate this. But they watch it every single day. Uh, These people are the same way, right? They Mike and Chuck, you know what I'm talking about. They sit here every week and they complain. Oh my God, I can't believe this guy got this push. Why is Apollo Crews even out there on TV against someone like you know Dolph Ziggler? He's not even his his stature yet. Why is he out there? Why isn't Dolph Ziggler getting a title push? Oh my God, Dolph Ziggler got a title push. Can you believe that? Why do they do that with him? Have any of you ever heard of this wrestling group called uh, Yep, I Like Wrestling on Facebook? No. I, I don't Negative. know. Maybe. Maybe. Well, they, they, I don't they, even they, know. They have, uh, they have viewing parties up in New York, and they have uh, the guy Rosenberg uh, host the parties and all that stuff. Um, some some wrestlers, um, lower card wrestlers, actually come through and attend the parties that are not on the card and stuff like that. But there was a guy who had a, a YouTube show. His name was James Faluka. And this man swore all that he was not watching Raw as long as John Cena was on top. This is that thing. Oh, I could that he every pay per view he went on YouTube and complained. Every time Raw happened and Cena won and all this stuff, he went on YouTube and complained. I'm not watching I'm only watching pay per views, I'm not watching Raw. Then it turned and I'm not watching any pay per views. So but he kept on doing his show. Man, when he did his show he did it from his bedroom. If you look in his bedroom, He's got all these three hundred dollar replica belts. Now, this was, and he complains. All he did was bitch and complain about WWE. Why are you bitching and complaining about WWE and then turn around and spend three hundred dollars on replica belts? Because he's getting <laughs> subscribers on YouTube that are allowing him to buy the three hundred dollar replica belts. If his show was that good, it would be. Right. So, you know, he, we, well, he, well, you're, you're assuming he, the show has got him that kind of uh, notoriety. Well, he he got he got me and Rob got a hold to him. And I'm you catch KJ and Chuck kind of know how that turned out. I mean KJ and uh, uh, Chris, you know, if me and Rob get on a rant and, and start going at you and calling y'all your bull, bullshit, especially when you're sitting there trying to tell us that you're not watching anything, but then you're gonna do a show about Raw, but you're not watching Raw. Like, how does that even make sense? Yeah. And so he 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 blocked us. He blocked us off YouTube. He blocked us off Facebook. He left a wrestling group. I Man, mean, I'd he, forgotten he, about that. Oh my God! Yeah, you do remember that one, Chris? Yes, I forgot all about that guy that blocked you guys. Oh man, that's hilarious. I mean, oh, like, damn! I missed a good like, story. Like, Shit! Oh, it's like, oh, no, no, no. like, oh, oh, really. is, is Tim back again? Yeah, I'm back. He, he, he fell off Tim. again. This is, this is for you. My, my phone keeps cutting out. <laughs> damn Tim! <laughs> Take that phone out of the pasture crashing. already. <laughs> it's, I, I just I I I I I don't I, I like WWE fans. They're, they're, like I said, they're some of the most loyal, confused people who don't know what the hell they want. They just don't. All they all they want to do is watch pay per view and then jump on the internet and complain about it. Well, well you can tell how confused the they are. Listen to the crowd. One side goes, let's go, Cena. The other side goes, no, Cena sucks. And they're like, no, well, that, let's go, Cena. And then but, they switch sides. Ten minutes later. But I mean, they do that. They do that just for the sake of. They do that just to do that. It's just like with Kurt Angle's music hit when he was at his peak. They still treat you suck, and everyone was saying, you know, every time right. he went out, it's like you suck. So that's just the thing to do now. It's just a thing to do. You know, yeah, it's just it's, like you hear uh, real quick. I am so sick of hearing this is awesome with a with a, like a three star yes. match now. I'm like, yes. this match is not awesome. This match is good, okay, but... I'm this like, is I'm, decent. Uh, you know, you know what they do? Uh, though? This they'll, is they'll decent. Do, they'll do the this is awesome <laughs> thing, not necessarily because it's a great match, because they think they see two people facing off that they never thought they would see face off, and suddenly they're face to face. You know, if <laughs> you can have someone come out there and stare each other down, and they'll do this is <laughs> awesome. Kind of like when, like, the, when, they, they when, the shield, when the Shield stayed off against with the Wyatt family for those couple of yes. times, they chanted, this is awesome. They never even touched Okay, well, other. that is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. So hey, you okay. know what I found awesome tonight? And that was that was Heath Slater's performance. The dude, looked, the dude looked good. 
I mean, he's got, he's he came up the top rope up. looking like 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 a jaw like a what a like a holler ginger carpet bomb when he man, jumped he wanted, off to the outside. He wanted them belts back, man. He got kids. He got, yeah, he he got, got kids. Back. Back. <laughs> Uh, hey, honestly, I've always been a fan of Slater. I've always thought he was underrated, and I've always thought he was underutilized. Hey, I gotta, if he had a better you know, look, if gotta, he had a better gotta, look, he'd be much higher on the card because he's a great talker and he's a good oh, yeah. wrestler. So I got, you know, I gotta support him. He, he he's a he's from my home state. The dude was, you know, we had that flooding last year. The dude came in and and he brought people with him. He he brought money. He was down going through the rubble with people. I mean, it gave me a new respect for him. So cool. I'm not. So I'm not really a fan. Of, I'm not really a fan of Heath Slater, but I will say this: the guy can sell like a motherfucker. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you guys made me think of something, Mike. You made me think of something to say. Now this is completely off topic of the pay per view, and we'll jump right back to it in a second. But this has just been burning in my crawl for a while now. Oh boy. You guys, I know y'all have seen it. it. It floats around Facebook constantly when they do this. All right, former stars, former wrestlers, reaching out. Through uh, these, uh, uh, like like Indiegogo or what these other type of sites where you can do, donate money to them, okay? Yeah. All right. Probably everybody yeah. and everybody and their mother has got one out there now. Did you see recently? All right. There's two of them that really got me the most. One of them was Rip Rogers. Uh, got one out there looking for donations because. And it, and it, part of his description of why he needs donations and stuff is because he feels like he was overlooked over all his years of entertainment, and he was deserving of a better push than what he got, and then getting anything like that. And the other one, <laughs> the other one was Virgil. Virgil, like make me a million. It was just make me a million. Surprise me. Yes, it was just, about it was just make me a millionaire. That's all it was. You, you mean, you it mean was not, did, you hear, did you guys Look, hear about listen, what Chris Jericho did listen. one of those sites? No. Oh, no them? I, I saw what? Matt Hardy did with it, though. That was hilarious. Yeah, uh, no, uh, no, Chris Jericho, one of, one of the guys that basically kind of helped him out when he was first coming into the business, died of cancer or some, died of something not that long ago, and they were trying to be able to afford the funeral and all this stuff, and he and he put all the money into it that they that they requested. Right now, Jericho's done it on more than one occasion, though. He's done it more than once, yeah, as far as... Yeah, he donated to Perry Satter's account, too. Right, now, Perry Satter's account. I might understand Perry Saturn's cause, though, because, let's face it, he did have a rough go with drugs and everything. He's trying to be a re- right. trying to recover, I guess, and if it's legit, that's a good cause. Well, but to have someone come out I and see. not be hurt, not be hurting for anything, not, not without a home, not with anything, but, hey, make me a millionaire. You know, I mean, come the, on. Thing, the thing is this with uh, with like Perry Saturn, I was it DDP like last year, year before, brought him into his house and tried to help him clean up. And I mean, this has been a reoccurring theme. There's a certain point where you're just like, dude, I'm done with you. You know, it's cool to stay in need, but you know, if there's a certain point where it's like this guy can't be helped. You know, and, and, and this is gonna this is gonna sound harsh because I, I mean I, I I have family members who who have you know recovered from drugs or whatever. But here's my thing. You're a grown ass man. Yeah. Nobody told you to spend your money on crack. Nobody told you to spend your money on booze. Nobody told you to spend your money on on whatever it is you got hooked on. For every wrestler that you know, can say, Oh well I was came up I started in the eighties and we were doing cocaine and this and that I can point you to another wrestler who was right there with him and still have the majority of their money and still are doing good and you know, kinda of successful or, or did something with their money. Not everybody could be, you know, uh, successful. Or uh, not, not everybody was getting million dollar paychecks. But at the same time, the no. people who want a lower card, who were getting maybe like two or three, two or three hundred thousand, you know, they did something with their money. They they went and got a job. Like they went to school. They did something. They invested in the business. They did. They didn't just snort it up their damn nose. So hey, I, I there's, only, uh, there's only so much you can help them. You know what I'm saying? Like I agree with Tim. Yeah, there's only so much you can give a guy. George Daniels still taught at a high school when he wasn't uh, wrestling. Yeah, he was a a teacher. He was a high school teacher, and then he he wrestled on the weekends. So, you know. Well, here's the thing. Listen, the man wrestled with a freaking mop. Give him some money. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking money. He's asking for money. He's he's got one eye going this way, and the other eye, just give him fucking money. Just like you can see, 
And you, you know what I mean? Like, I would go, I would turn a crack if my fucking, if I had to carry around a mop and say, you're a real good. You know what well, I mean? Well, he wasn't like, doing anything else. That was the biggest push he got in WWE, period. Besides the five yeah. man teams with the Radicals. So, you know, you know what I mean? That was the biggest thing. That's the only thing anybody remembers besides was him sitting on the, sitting on the uh, ring side with the other guys and the mop. There's everything in between. Is like wasn't, the, uh, wasn't the mop some sort of punishment for some bad behavior or that's what they something did. of the sort? Well, no, that's he was a candidate that and he was sitting around the mop. No, that he that he he gotten like the guy did something in a match. One of the jobbers like did something he wasn't supposed to, and he kicked the living shit out of him. Uh, uh, Mike Bell, what's the guy's name? Yeah, Mike Bell, and thus Moppy. So yeah. Yeah. Have anyway. you guys heard? Uh, have you guys heard? I don't know if this is true or not. Uh, Cornette was saying this in one of his um, podcasts. Now there's a little clip of it. It's not the entire podcast, but a little clip mm-hmm. you can listen to where he's talking about the Rock and Roll Express making the Hall of Fame and how people are saying on his thing, how on his Twitter about how the Midnight Express should go in with him and how Jim Cornette should be there putting them in and all this other stuff. And he saw how he I heard that how 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 he won't retweet it or anything, and he didn't want to feel like he's imposing on their accomplishment. But in the, someone asked him, did he want to be in the Hall of Fame? And he said the way he looked at it was kind of like this. He's different than a lot of other people, but he says, first off, it's never going to happen, is what he said, because you know, we don't get along that well. And secondly, he said, <laughs> if, if, you, if, you, if you feel like you've got to be in the WWE Hall of Fame to, to, to show that you're over it with your career, then you didn't have a career really anyway. He said, I'm already in this Hall of Fame, this Hall of Fame, this Hall of Fame. He goes, now, would I turn it down? He says... I would not turn it down because I I would want this for the guys. He want, he'd want it for for, uh, for Bobby Eaton and Stan Lane, Dennis Condry, whoever they decide to put into the Midnight Express. But let me ask you this: Have you guys heard? Have you guys heard that if they if they get into the Hall of Fame, do they sign a contract with the WWE to give over their they get, rights for their uh, likeness and everything? No, they they do like a legend. Do you remember the whole legends contract thing? Right, the legends. They do one contract. of those for a short period of time. They do one of those. It's like a year or something, from my okay. understanding, is how it works. Like a year and stuff. But then they also give him like a ten thousand dollar ring and all this other stuff. And Jim Cornette's such a fucking hypocrite. That guy made so much money off the of WWE because they were paying him for freaking OVW for what a decade. Mm-hmm. It's well, just, it's just no, I, I really that, that guy. You know, what? Not, not just, it's just for a year. It's not bad at all, but. The reason no, why I ask that question. Uh, no, the reason I ask that question is because you know, um, when one of our friends on Facebook named Tony put a picture up and he tagged me in it, here's a picture of him with um, Teddy Long, and he says, "Hey Chris, Teddy Long says don't be a don't be a hater, Flair." So I <laughs> had messaged him back, and I tagged both Tony and Teddy Long both, and I says, you know, the, the usual thing, you know, holler holler, Flair. But that's what he's so famous for. And I said, when are you coming back on the show with us? He comes back and says that he would, uh, that uh, he can't come back on podcast, that Vince doesn't let him do podcast anymore. He's not the first person uh-huh. to say that either. That's why I'm, I, 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 normally I would have said, he, oh, well, maybe he's just trying to be in a nice way trying to say no. But he's not the wait, first wait, wait. person I've heard say that, though. And I wonder, is it the Legends so contract that does that? They, 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 they have Legends contracts and they have Ambassador contracts. And they kind of almost they kind of almost like the same thing. I think one pays more than the other. I think that's probably the only difference. But it, as an ambassador, you go out and you you know you rep, you, you promote WWE and, the, and like 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 signings and all that stuff. You they you put the banner behind you, WWE Hall of Fame or whatever, whatever. Legends contract, make you probably uh, doing some TV spots so you can get a little bit more money. So that they, they probably they probably won't let him do that. If he if he's under either one of those kind of contracts, Vince probably won't let him do it. Yeah, I mean I understand that because I mean basically because you know they they don't want you to uh, basically get caught up in a situation that they find is unfavorable, things like that. I uh-huh. get that. Uh-huh. You know you got to protect uh-huh. your brand. You know it sucks, but you know it does suck, no doubt. I understand it. I get it. I mean I hate it though. Because you, it, it leaves, you know, small-time people with no chance of getting one of these guys on the show in any way. Whereas a Stone Cold or a JR or a Chris Jericho or a Vince Russo even or an Eric Bischoff, if they're not too mad at him yet these days, can get, uh, get one of these guys on their, their show, you know. 
and talk with them, but you're not going to get them it, like it was, on it was, Robin Ray's kind of Everything like the, Wrestling the, page or Body Slam the Competition. It's kind of the same thing we had with Stevie Ray. Stevie Ray is not under contract with anybody, so of course he would come in. Now, we couldn't get him and his brother together because, you know. Well, Booker T's on right, WWE TV. Contract, you know? Yeah, right. well, he. Well, at the time, at the was he when we interviewed the I don't was he on TV? I'm not I sure. don't think he. Uh, he he wasn't doing no. He at the time he was not. He had his own wrestling organization, but he yeah, had the legend contract, though, I believe. That's right. Right. So and, and then like when we when we asked um when we did the pre-show interview we he, we asked him like is there anything that you're not allowed to talk about? He said man you can ask anything you want. He said so we can we talk about your brother? He said we could talk we could talk about my brother, but. We can't go into like behind the scenes WWE stuff because number one, I don't want to get him in trouble, and number two, you know he can't he he can't really tell stuff that's going on back there because he that'll get him again that'll get him in trouble. So he just kept it basically he kept it basically WCW basically you know yeah. Well, I mean, in all honesty, what did Stevie Ray really have to do with WWE anyway? I mean, he, I'm pretty sure he knows some things. I'm, All I know, but oh, my yeah. point is that his career basically stopped with WCW. You know, okay. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, yeah, from, from a national like, well, standpoint, I mean, I'm pretty sure. I mean, y'all, y'all, y'all know Rob. If, Rob, if we say Rob go at it, he he got all into Stevie Ray's and Booker T's personal <laughs> business. So it's, oh, it's, you know. but you know what? You guys <laughs> dropped the ball on the main question. You didn't ask him the main question. What main you know question what I'm talking was? about. The, the Booker T no. slip up on WCW, but hold oh, on. You know what? You know what? I, I, <laughs> you know what? I think he, I think we discussed I, I, we discussed asking that question, and I think I was the one that said we might not want to talk about that. Yeah? <laughs> we might not want to bring that exactly. Exactly. You know, you know, though, that was hilarious. I was cracking up. It was. Snip it was hilarious. Like, his face. I mean, his it, face. Like, it was. Oh. It was. It was almost as good as the time they caught uh, Mean Gene uh, dropping the F-bomb. Yeah. And it would have been all in humor, too. It, it wouldn't have been a serious question, right? It would have been all in humor. You know, it yeah. wouldn't have had to be like a big deal. You just could have said, look, i got to run this by you. We found this to be hilarious as a fan. And we we could tell he looked so mad at himself, maybe almost to a point of embarrassment, <laughs> that he had said yeah, that. He was and and just, just all we want to know is, is what was the feel when the interview was over? What was the feel back there? What what was he saying about that at the time? Was he mad at himself? Was he upset? Was it just funny? Were they laughing it off? You know, what what happened with it? I, I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure they had a good laugh about it when they got in the car, but I right then yeah, in that exactly. moment <laughs> in that moment <laughs> it was fire. Like, dude, what the fuck did you say? <laughs> yeah, 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 man, we need a job, man. We got kids. <laughs> Wait, yo, you know what's funny about kids. that, though? <laughs> Listen, you know what's funny about that is that you can tell that Sherry Martell, who was known to be a sweetheart, like, grabbed him as, like, rubbing his back, saying, like, it's okay. And you can. You can tell that he screwed up. He was like, oh, he, he wins. Yeah, right away. He was like, Ooh. instantly. You could tell by his face. Yeah. He's like, oh, damn it. You know, like right away. Because that because that's something that Booker T would say to his friends. He wouldn't necessarily yeah. say that in in, yeah. in conversation. Let's put it that way. So I, 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 I say he had a street corner flashback. Is what I like. <laughs> Dude, he you know, he, 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 he got, got wrapped up in the morning. He got wrapped up in the morning, sort of sort of like I do with my. When uh, I don't know if y'all, you know, I uh, have Ethan talking, but when I do promos, like I get wrapped up in like. What I'm saying, and I I kind of have a street flat a hood flashback, and I have to stop and redo it all over again. You know, I, I don't want that getting out. Yeah, no, I hear you. Right, I hear That's you. all right, man. That's all right. And here we have here we have KJ talking like he has you know like uh, afternoon tea with Booker T, and he knows how he is and how he talks no, to his friends no. and shit. Right, right. Listen, right, right. Yes, sir. Ray, yes, sir. You know what I'm right. You yes, know what I'm talking about, right, Ray? Though you know what I'm talking about. Hold on, hold on. Why do you got to be Ray. reading those for? Why can't I know? Why are you going to be doing those? Because you going that way. It doesn't matter what it is. <laughs> hey, 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 <laughs> hey, hey, guys. Why we go to <laughs> hey. Over we, here. we completely what? went off of what today's topic was supposed to be, just to let you know. Yeah, I tried to, I tried to do that, but <laughs> oh, then Jesus. I just extended it, and it, you know, this happened. Okay. It happened. I just want you to know, you know we got to get back on. Hey, I, I okay, listen, right. I, I agree with Ray, him. What? It's your fault, Ray, okay? It's your fault this <laughs> happened. And you know what, do you know what just happened <laughs> to you, know, Ray? Do you know what just happened to you? You just I, made I'm the pretty, list! Congratulations. 
Ray, it's an honor. Ray. It's, 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 yeah, it's don't an worry. Honor. Chuck it's out there every honor. day. Ray, <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Ray, Ray, yes, make sir. sure you have that. They should, dude, have the card. You know what I'm talking about. Play it anytime. Ray. Bro. That's what I would do. Ray. Ray. Uh, Ray. 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 All right. Ray. So what, what did you guys think of the of the new elimination chamber? The uh, smaller, more improved. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm glad it's I'm glad it's smaller because let's face it, you know they they had put out there that the, the entire match had almost died because of the logistics of moving that big bastard around. Well, one, 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 of, one of the things one of the things that I really liked about it was the actual way the the doors opened. I thought that was really cool. It was just something they didn't do before. It was like those clunky, those circular ones. Now they slide through and stuff. I thought that was a really cool improvement. They got the I don't know if you know, but they've got WWE on top of it. Now it's like it, you know, it's like a metal WWE thing, which is really cool. I think. I think it's, I like it. I actually think it's, it's, it's over it's, the original. It's smaller, you but know. they made it so. Remember when guys used to try to get up on top of it and they had to crouch down and all that stuff? Yeah. They, they got a little bit more room for that, and they. I, I want to say I'm not. I'm not going to say that's a padding on the outside instead of a grate, but it, it, the grate is covered up, so it's, it's a safer elimination chamber if you want to think of it. Yeah. If that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah, I don't and want safe you're... with my elimination chamber. I don't want safe. No, tell them what you said earlier it. about it because you kind of nailed it earlier when you were telling me about your okay. thoughts on that match. Tell them what you said about it. I said basically, okay, there's no grate, okay, right off the bat. That sucks. <laughs> Two, it's not tall. It's not tall enough for the pods to jump off of because Rob Van Dam almost broke his legs trying to jump. That's two. Three, thanks plexiglass or fake plexiglass, it, there's no danger. It's it, it's just like the the um, what is it? It's a heck in the cell. In <laughs> the heck of the cell, you're not allowed to bleed. So it's a heck in the cell, not hell in the cell. That's one. KJ wants glass where you can puncture a lung and grate so you can. Well, no, no. We have the answer to the six-man question, then. They should have just put New Jack in the motherfucker, and he could have brought all the weapons <laughs> with him, and no, you would have had blood what? and guts yeah. and gore, and you it know, would have been great. You, you know what, Mike? Now, now we speak in the same language, Mike. Now <laughs> we speak in the same language. I hated New so, Jack. I thought he was garbage. But no, I'm, 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 t- I'm telling, I'm telling you now. If I, if I ever was a professional wrestler, you can rest assured that I was going to have on some type of cargo pants with pockets, and there's going to be a knife or some forks or some staples in my. Yes, yes, yes. Someone is getting crazy. Crazy use of a melon baller. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not throwing that gimmick flash paper or none of that stuff. I'm throwing legit salt in your eyes. I'm, yes, I'm throwing it all. Yes. He gets a gets spice grater and starts going to town on your forehead with it. <laughs> all of that. Yeah. Listen, well, look, now, I don't, Joe made a good point about the plexiglass earlier, though, the fake plexiglass. He made a good point about that earlier, and it didn't have to be that flimsy because, look, they had Baron Corbin no. looking really tough for a while until he threw uh-huh. dude, you know, Dean Ambrose through the plexiglass, and it looked like it was just paper folding over in half. Plastic wrap. I mean, God. Well, you, wrap. Y'all, y'all know what? Let's be honest. Now, I know why we got this type of stuff going on, right? Now, let's come on. Let's 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 pull the curtain back. We got we got we got politician Congresswoman Linda who who got people watching. They got the board of directors watching. And first thing they see is somebody gets stuck with something. They say, oh no, we we can't have this. And Vince, as y'all know, Vince don't like to answer to nobody. Who was so it he, that? He, uh... Who who was the politician that said that uh, wrestling was bad for people, bad for TV, bad for kids, because it was so violent and cutting people open and all? What I forget who it was. It was several years ago. I, it, it's kind of like what you're saying there right with now. her being where she is now, and it's all about yeah. having these type of people look at your product and everything. They're trying I to say, well, we well, can't be too. Who was it? It was Vince Russo. Was it no? It was a politician. So it was, and it wasn't. Was, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was it Ralph Nader? Was it Ralph Nader? Because that motherfucker, motherfucker lo- hates uh, everything. I, that, I, I, I'm right. not gonna lie, guys. I can't remember who it was. I just know. I just know it was a politician because people were you making know, such a big fuss about I don't it. I don't know who it was. We have the internet, and you can probably look it up. I'm looking it up right now. Well, you go, Mr. Statistician. Look it up for us. Let us know this. Yeah, Tim. Tim, you you know I live in the West Virginia. We ain't got no interwebs here. Oh, Lord. They got the shallow interwebs. Tim's in the deep interwebs. 
He's he's out there in that communist country of California. Yeah, right. What a horrible place I live in. <laughs> I, I, look, look, Mike, he, he got good internet, but he got crappy phone service. So, yeah. How far, yeah. How far are you from the Potomac area, Mike? Canyon. Hold I on, I'm getting asked your question here. How far are you from the Potomac River area, Mike? Ah. Depends on which part of it. Uh, between four and a half and five hours. Okay, well, I'm, I can I'm be wanna, I can I'm, be in I'm, Baltimore in six. So you that's I'm 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 a good two hours from Baltimore. So that's to say you about a good three four hours from me. Uh, who knows? Oh hell yeah! Oh uh, yeah, I can't get you know it's funny is I can't get any internet. <laughs> oh, <Jesus Christ. laughs> My shit ain't working today. I don't know. Yeah, that's how you were all trying to be a smartass, and your internet sucks, and it made you look like an asshole. Oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> there you go. There. <laughs> your shit's always broke. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, 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 uh, I'm actually I'm made you read that. No, my mind's uh, mine, because I'm walking down the road right now, and I'm even calling so Oh, now I understand. Huh. How about how about how about my favorite match of the night? And it has nothing to do with wrestling at all. But my favorite match of the night was I I got Alexa Bliss and Naomi in the ring together, and all you all I could see was booty. Asses <laughs> <laughs> just everywhere. Yeah, asses and titties. Yeah, like, yeah. And Naomi? Oh yeah, I motorboat her, dude. For real. <laughs> motorboat. <laughs> and, and there goes. And there goes our female res- listeners right out the window, even if we... All two of them. All one of them? <laughs> hey, I will have yeah. you guys know, I looked at the stats, it said on Blog Talk, they said our entire listening base was females. Can you believe that? Nah. What kind now of, we got two listeners. Thanks a lot. What kind of show did I, what kind of show did I, what kind of show did I call in on if y'all are listening about females? That, uh, what is it? Oh, it's all what a big it? lie. You know Blog Talk's got crap stats. They got nothing to really yeah. comes to stats and stuff, man. It, it eats me up about this place. I love the whole setup here. I do. Yeah. But, man, you cannot judge how good your show is doing at all on here. You, Period. You know, how no. judge, you, know how, you know how I judge how good our show does, Mike? I mean, uh, uh, Chris. How's that? <laughs> Where I place it. Yeah, here's something for you guys. I don't know if I – I don't know if I, I – I know I mentioned, mentioned something about this earlier to, uh, you know, to – to Chuck and to JJ, but uh, honestly, like that middle section of the uh, Luke Harper and um, Randy Orton match was like so boring to me. It was like so boring when Orton would like do a move, then he'd stand up on the you know on the turnbuckle do his stupid little pose. I was just like, this is dumb. That was just him I being arrogant, that. though. That, that's the whole that's the so whole thing about Randy Orton. That it, 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 it seemed, it seemed like even the, the, the announce team was like, oh, this is kind of boring. They kind of went silent for a while. And oh, you know what? Let, 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 let me ask you guys this. Let me ask because uh, most of y'all will know this for sure. And you all know he looks like him already. Do you think they could take Luke Harper as an individual and give him a push and not necessarily make him a Bruiser Brody type monster, but – give him a good push where the new young fans will see him as a modern day Bruiser Brody type person who goes out and does fight hard, fight tough, kick butt. And if they ever get back to blood again, draw a lot of blood, which I doubt they ever will. Well, 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 but can he well, not be that kind of wrestler? Well, let's be honest. The, 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 the fans, the, the, the modern, so-called modern fans that are sitting in the arenas now have no idea who Bruiser Brody is. No, but I mean, they could – do some kind of, well, I don't know if they would make a reference or not, but for the, those of us who do know who he is, we're dying to see him with that kind of a push. Because I, I, I think honesty, he can do it. He, he can, and this is, in, in my opinion, I, yeah, he's got, that, he's got that feel to him, but he's also more athletic than Bruce Brody ever was. Right. You know, I, that's, no, 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 I think he's a better stop, wrestler. Stop, yeah, Bruce Brody was not stop. a great wrestler. Tim, he Tim, was a you, got, tough guy. Tim you have stop. to stop. You're hurting KJ. You he are was hurting him. Bruce Bro- 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 Brody was a he, big, he, tough guy. Uh, but Bruce Brody Bro- wasn't coming off the tube, wasn't doing drop kicks or anything. He couldn't even do that shit. Yes, he was. What are you talking about? He wasn't. Bruiser Brody was. Are you talking to me about Bruiser Brody? You're really yeah, arguing with me about Brody. Bruiser Brody. Yeah, basically, yeah. You're you're you've got this you've got this uh, vision of him that's not really what he is. 
And that's uh, no, I, have a, I know what the vision is. I know what the vision is. He used to yeah. do drop kicks. He used to... Uh, uh, listen, Harper is a different ki- kind of wrestler. I wouldn't say... But it's, it's apples and oranges. The look is there, but they're two different types of wrestlers. You don't see Harper doing, like... He's not Kurt Angle either. That's what I'm saying. Oh, no. Both of them are both of them are athletic in their own right. He played football. He, uh, Bruiser Brody. He he jumped in the air. He was one of the best big men because he was slight on his on his feet. I'm telling you, the guy he could wrestle. Maybe not wrestle like again collegiate, but again, it's it's apples and oranges. They're two different wrestlers. It's hard to say that. They're two different. Do people think that he's just like they can't make him a Bruiser Brody? They shouldn't well, make him a Bruiser Brody. They're two well, the different people, wrestlers. He doesn't have the intensity that Bruiser has. He the, doesn't the, have the that, funny, that thing. He just the funny thing is, he was doing a, before he before he came into WWE when he was on the independent circuit. He was doing a Bruiser Brody type gimmick. Yeah, as Brody Lee. As I Brody know, Lee. but yeah, I, 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 I listen, and I remember I've seen it. He's still like he being a, a Brody type and being a uh, Brody are two different things. I, you know what I mean? I, 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 I agree, but see, again, another guy who would I would say, I, this is what I would do. Everybody who's six foot eight and taller, I would send them to, to Mark Calloway, Undertaker, whatever you want to call him, and I would tell you, tell him to teach them, show them everything you know, give them, give. Impose your knowledge upon them as far as being a big man in this business. And then you know who I would send them to instead? I would send them to who? Kane. I would send them to Glenn. I would send, I would send them, them to Glenn. Kane. Because I think Clay, guys, he, everybody he, says that Kane is one of the smartest guys in wrestling, period. And he's oh, also yeah, one guy that is. is out there to help people, and he well, has he, been doing things to help people for years. See, see, see here's, here's the thing when you say one of the smartest guys in wrestling, that, don't, that doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean. You're smart in wrestling. That just means you're well, a you, smart guy. This Kane is a smart guy. But the thing, again, Kane sat underneath the Undertaker learning tree. No, that doesn't mean he doesn't. I mean, he's a big man himself. That doesn't mean he doesn't, so it doesn't know. Mean, in fact, he, he's taller and bigger than Undertaker. So he and he had to move and, and be and be agile just like him. But, Remember, remember when Kane came in? Kane was real stiff. I mean, uh-huh. look at the first, look at the first, look at the first tombstone he ever did, and it, it made me cringe. So I'm like, uh-huh. dude, he just paralyzed that guy. But he, he, he was would take it long enough. He became fluid in the ring. Uh-huh. That's everybody. The, the more you get in the ring, the better you get. I mean, that's that's well, the gimmick. No, no, you know? but I'm, some some what people I'm saying, don't. Most people. Most people that are actually true students of wrestling and guys that can get it eventually do get it, you know. But I agree, with, always- I agree with Ray. I mean, I would send them to, to Taker to learn, and that would be a good way for Taker to finally stop getting in the ring because God, he yes. needs to stop. Yes. Jesus, he yes. needs to oh, stop. Oh, please. Yes. Please. And, and he could still be useful, and he could still be around, but he just but, wouldn't but for- get out there looking like, you know, an oversized Clint Eastwood at Gran Torino. I was listening to a Steve, uh, Steve Austin's podcast the other day, and he was, of all people, I, I don't even know why I listened to it, but he was talking to Paul Roma. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Paul Roma. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but Paul Roma was riding, he w- when he came into WWF, he was riding with Mr. Fuji. And Mr. Fuji was teaching him ring psychology, and he said, "I'm trying to teach you. I'm gonna teach you, but when you in you when you get it, you'll get it." And Paul Paul said he was in the ring and he had a guy. The guy had him in a uh, a choke uh, a reverse uh, choke chin hold or whatever. I can't even think of it's called. And he said, in, in that moment, he got it. And he said, when he said he got it, he's like, "Is that it? Is that is, is, that's all this is?" And he's like, "I was basically overthinking it." And it's just ring psychology. When you get it, you just get it. And then when you get it, you find you figure out like there's really not nothing to it. It's just doing this little thing, doing this little thing. And and he he said he it it just opened up a whole new world. Now it didn't translate well for him, but but he understood it. You know what I'm saying? So some 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 people you just like you like you said, the more you're in the ring, the more you get it. But you just have to you just have to have that moment of clarity. 
whether you're in the ring when it happens or whether you ride in the car when it happens or whatever, you, you have to have that moment of clarity to, 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 to get that ring psychology. It's like, oh, so this is what I need to do to get them to boo me or cheer me or to get them to do something or to make this look like it's supposed to look or whatever, whatever, whatever it is. Some people just don't have that moment of clarity. They just automatically think, because I was trained by this person and I know how to do these moves, everything else will come to it. And you don't always work that way. Some people are just lucky to get it. Some people just have to work at it. So, you know, uh, when when I mentioned earlier about the whole Brody look and everything, though, I don't mean I don't want him to be just like Bruiser Brody. I don't mean that at all. What I mean is, I mean, he's got, although he has a similar resemblance for those of us who know who Bruiser Brody is, he's got that similar resemblance to him, and he can probably pull off a good imitation of him if he wanted to, probably. He's got similar qualities about him as far as being big, having that beard, getting that look, when he calls to the crowd, uh, the hand gestures and stuff. I mean, he reminds me of somebody else that came on the show with us here one time who is on the indie circuit, and he calls himself The Beast. If you ever get a chance to check him out on YouTube, go look up The Beast on YouTube. He's got a lot of his matches out there. Um, he's got an Abdul the Butcher look, but he does not wrestle just like Abdul the Butcher, and he's more athletic than what Abdul the Butcher is. So, I mean, he's got a different, a different feel for him. He he gets that look, but puts his his spin on it though, and makes it a little bit different. Maybe not, I don't know if it's it depends on who's looking as to whether they think it's better or not because Abdul is a legend, has been around for a long time. Same thing with Brody. We're never going to say that Harper's going to take Brody's place ever. That'll never happen. He'll never be another Bruiser Brody, just like they'll never yeah, be another Ric Flair. They'll never yeah, be no, right, another you're right. you know, Listen, Macho Man. So, but, well, but that's what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying is I don't even want him to go in that direction. I don't. You I don't do want not, though. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. See, wrestling has, with, with the advent of the Internet and everybody trying to find out everything before it actually happens and all this stuff, you, you, you back like in the eighties and seventies, you you had like it was almost like tunnel vision. This is what a wrestler is supposed to do. Now you got all these different opinions and all these different know-it-alls or people who just because they write a column on Facebook think they know every damn thing and they put their two cents out. Then you got the younger people coming up thinking because this person writes on Facebook they supposed to know it all and, and then they following and believing it. It's, it's so many people who got so many different ideas of what certain people should be and it, it's it gets convoluted at some point like you got one like that kick uh, Chuck KJ is, is he don't want uh what's his name Harper to be like Bruiser Brody but then there's some people who just can't help but see Bruiser Brody and want him to be just like Bruiser Brody and so mm-hmm. it's like again it's like so what do you do you put him out there as a Bruiser Brody and half the crowd shits on him and the other half loves it or do you make him his own character and half the crowd shits on and half the crowd loves it. It's, I I just think that he's not he doesn't have that he he has those wide eyes and that just that that annoys me because I don't like I don't like the wide eye thing. Okay, well, yeah, I, I just think he, he can't I just, that. KJ, <laughs> no. you're just you're just a fanboy, KJ, and that's the problem. And there's nothing no, wrong I, with it. You just dude, love Bruiser Brody. If I, he was yo, alive, you would go right his diarrhea pecker. in your mouth, dude. Diarrhea <laughs> all up in your mouth. I don't care. What I'm saying is, um. <laughs> What I'm saying is he has this he, he can have this thing where he has dead eyes where he just looks he's got that thousand yards there and he can just come in and beat the you know, beat the piss out of somebody or just make it I don't know, but not that. Whatever it is, not not see, Bruce Brody. See, see, I, not not, Bruce it, Brody. It, I don't want to see him in the ring. This is what's gonna That's happen. It. See they're gonna take him out of that dirty white beat and them dirty jeans and they're gonna put him in traditional wrestling gear and KJ's not gonna like that at all either. Look, as long as he can do a Grammy roll, I don't care. I really don't care. I really don't. As long as they start, as long as he asks for neutral, we're fine. You know what I mean? Hey, I, hey, I'm Chris, Chris. neutral. Uh-huh. Yes, Chris. Can I, can I ask the Ray a, a question that doesn't pertain to the uh, Elimination Chamber pay per view? Why not? We haven't been. So what are you talking about? Shut up, KJ. Shut your time. mouth. That matter of fact, <laughs> matter of fact, go ahead and do that, and then I want to jump on one of the back to one of the matches again. We got right. we have thirty minutes left. We got plenty of time, so to throw it out there, then I want to jump back to one of the matches again. I want to know what your thoughts are on what seems to be the inevitable happening at WrestleMania versus uh, Bork Lester. For the 1977 oh. Buick Interior Championship. 
Since this is how my father had a Buick with red leather interior. Um, <laughs> does it not look like? Does it not look like a '70s model Buick inside? That that that, that, yes. that title is ugly as hell. Jesus, oh my oh, lord! Get, get, get prepared for the blue one that's coming in a few. In a oh no! Months, so. No, yeah, I hope not. For that one. No. Oh, it's I coming, hope not. Please don't. It's they coming. they never should have separated the the world title. There should have been one world champion that competed on both shows. I I'm agree sorry. With you both. But I, I'm, I'm sorry. From, from, from my mouth, well, here, like, like I said, you, you, on, on one hand, you got you got this logic. No matter who else is on the card, Goldberg versus Brock is going to be the main event of WrestleMania. And the main event of WrestleMania, if you go by some people's logic, should have a title involved in it. Mm-hmm. So then, that, so then there's that. So you gotta have if, if that if you go by that, it should. But then you got the other side of the coin where you got two people, one of one of whom is probably won't be here long after WrestleMania. The other one is gonna have maybe three or, do three or four dates, do three or four big shows after WrestleMania, and they got the, and you got the title involved. So why would you put the title involved in that? So it's like a, again, it's. You damned if you do, you damned if you don't. Me personally, I say let them fight for the title. <laughs> See, we've been I mean, discussing that, and I had a I had a harebrained theory a long time ago that what was going to happen was is James Ellsworth was going to wind up oh, winning Jesus the world Christ. title from AJ Styles, oh, and that Lord. Goldberg was going to come in and win the Universal Championship because they've been trying to push the Universal title, but it's a bullshit title. It's shit. And it looks bad, and its title history has not been very strong. And that would have been a way to give it instant, instant legitimacy and give it more prestige than the world championship, because here it is hanging off of Ellsworth for you know a week or whatever. And then you got Goldberg on the other hand that got the universal title. All of a sudden now that's the that's the big dog title because Goldberg's got it, and over here you know chicken shit Ellsworth has it. I, I, I've come to I've come to the logic, you like maybe about three or four years ago, that what WWE is doing, and 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 before I say this, I absolutely enjoy, and I see what Triple H is trying to move the company to, and I see what he, what, he, what his kind of see what his plan is and how he's going to have things running, and I'm okay with that. But I'm I've come to the realization that for people like me who are almost forty and people are over forty years old. The WWE is, is is not for us. We can still watch it and enjoy certain things about it, but they're not they're pandering not making, to us anymore. They're, they're not doing anything for us. But this they should be. They, because well, they, Chris, they, 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 Chris, they should have some, they should have something for every age group. I agree, but we're 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 the guys who are going to put money on the network and do do podcasts. We're not the ones who are going to you know. Spend our tax money going to WrestleMania. We're not going to, you know, drop fifty, sixty dollars every time the show comes to our town. We're we're, we're not doing that. But we're Chris, perfectly, we're perfectly content of sitting here watching it on television. That's true. So they, they like, don't give a, they, they're, 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 We're not giving them their money. We're not giving them money, so they're not going to give us everything we want. Well, we are giving them money. Sure. They, they, they make well, we're more giving, money. Off. We're giving them nine ninety nine a month. Well, they, they make to, they make way more money compared to the to the to the uh, um, thirty five year old parent who has an eight year old child and they buying dolls and, and replica belts and and, and taking them to shows and you know buying them t shirts off WWE.com. dot com. You they know, they you know their money than they're getting out. Yeah, but yeah, they, they, they're 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 pandering to KJ's child so KJ can go spend money on the stuff that his child wants. Which is a bit of, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet because um, I'm sitting there going, "Damn you, McMahon!" At the same time, I'm like, "That little boy lost the wrestling." I mean, so. and, and like I said, they, they they have. I'm pretty sure they have a whole department where they just sit around and say, "You know what? We know who's buying our stuff. We know who's mm-hmm. going to sit around a bitch. We know who's going to sit around a bitch complain about it. The old folks are going to bitch complain. The young folks are going to buy it. So to hell with those bitches and complaining because they still don't we got their ratings that's how we making money off them we got their ratings advertising dollars they're going to lose the dollars these people are going to go buy our stuff so 
you know, we're going to give them what they want, which is they yeah, don't know I'm, what the hell I'm, they want, so we can do what we want anyway. So. I'm going to Raw in March with, you want to laugh? Me, my stepkid's father, and my son. And we're, that's what we're doing. We're going, we're going for that. Cause I, because it's more about the experience than it is everything else. We don't care the fucking popcorns, $50. We don't give a fuck about anything. What we give a fuck about is my five-year-old sitting there the whole time annoying me, asking questions like, why, 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 why? why? I'm going to love every minute of it. Why? Because when I was his age, I didn't even like wrestling. I didn't like wrestling until two years later. And he's discovering that now. He's playing with figures that I wish I had. Because so think about it. In my age, we had the rubber um, the rubber Hulk Hogan's and everything. All you have to do, all you mm-hmm. have to do with them is cross their legs. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, and I'm loving life. Mm-hmm. And that's it. They don't give a shit about anything else. I'm you know what? They'll throw mm-hmm. stuff at, at the fans, like the fanboys. They'll throw stuff at us. And if you think about it, this stuff has gone full circle. This stuff is now PG. When we were younger, the same thing was going on with WWE. It was PG. Think about you know, it. When I, when I went to my first wrestling show at the Capitol Center, first of all, the mm-hmm. Capitol Center was... If you, you could see the smoke cloud, there was a layer of cigarette smoke in the damn Capitol Center. And when, when, when Hillbilly Jim and Hulk Hogan got beat by Big John Stud and King Kong Bundy, they littered the fucking ring with two dollar popcorn. If you go to you go now and you are even attempted though a popcorn kernel into the ring, you're getting thrown out of there. And who's gonna throw eight dollar box of popcorn anyway? So. <laughs> <laughs> That's why KJ, KJ, you are a braver man than I am because I have been to a, I've been to a few live events, I've been to a raw, I've been to a a couple uh, pay per views, house shows. I would not dare take my son to a live event. He yeah. would be nuts. There would be, especially because I mean the closest real venue for me to go is the the PPG uh, Paint Center in in Pittsburgh. So mm-hmm. the old Consol Energy Center. Well, the one thing for sure, Mike, you can so take a raw show. Oh God, I yeah, I, I'm telling you. Uh, every every time there's a pay per view, Daddy, Daddy, is a new day going to be on this pay per view? <laughs> no, 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 that's that, not no, why. No, no. That's not why. <laughs> you know why? <laughs> the video. Oh yes, yes, yeah. WWE Monday Night Raw Championship. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's William. <laughs> Repeatedly, you get well, to I, I, go to Raw. I took a video of him. Um, he had he has no idea. He had never seen Mickey James before tonight because he usually doesn't watch SmackDown with me. And when she lost, he cried like literal tears of, of pain and sorrow for five Jesus. minutes because he said Mickey James is my favorite wrestler. And oh I'm like, gosh. you don't even know who the hell Mickey James is. <laughs> Dude, my my son does the same thing. He he got upset that somebody I forget it was a tag team. They lost his favorite tag team, and he starts flipping out. So I had to like distract him. I forget what happened. I distracted him. Oh. But the, the and, crazy uh, thing, was, yes, my, yes, you, yes. you you got to teach your son to start liking Alexa Bliss. So see, that's that's twofold right there. That's you have you have all kinds of fun with that. But see, I, I mean, can't I can't do that because then because then the then the wife will find out. That I am teaching him to like Alexa Bliss, and then I have to go yeah. sleep outside. Okay, well, it's multiple, well, it's multiple sorts of fun for me then. So, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> you get a call, like, Chris. I'm coming to live with you because my wife threw me out because I was teaching my son to, to like Alexa Bliss. <laughs> see, 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 here's how you get away with it. This is, this is how you get away with it. See, my my woman, she she watches a lot of uh, fake reality TV. So that's what I call it. Fake yeah. reality TV. Yeah. So, uh, so, so, so in turn, I get to watch the Bellas and Total Divas. So she thinks mm. I'm watching a bit. She thinks I'm watching because hey, I'm a big wrestling mark. No, 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 no. These women are half naked all the fucking time. That's why I watch. My five year old son DVRs Total Divas. Total Divas now. Yeah. So he but watches too. See, here's the but problem, here's the, Ray. Though my wife loves wrestling, so uh, my, my wife thinks my wife thinks wrestling is it. stupid. She, she thinks wrestling is my, stupid. My wife stupid. loves wrestling. She goes to shows with me. We we have we, mm-hmm. and she hates Alexa Bliss, not Real because passion. of <laughs> not because that not because that that I I like her. 
or that I find, you know, that I might think she's cute, but because she hates her, she thinks she's trash and garbage oh in the ring. <laughs> oh, we, we we got her to call in one night and say something about Alexa Bliss. I got to go back and dig that thing and make it just a separate file all on its own. That oh, was yes. funny stuff. <clears throat> Oh, she doesn't, she doesn't care for Nikki Bella either. She calls her Nikki yeah. Hella or Nikki Smella. Oh, oh you know what? Funny you bring that up because that was the match I wanted to go back to. Did, well, let's go back uh, to it. I, I know you mentioned before that you know you're not a huge. Uh, well, you go back and forth. You're not a huge Nikki Bella fan, but you say she's probably the most complete wrestler anyway for the women on this show. For on SmackDown. SmackDown. On, so yeah. the match itself with her and Natalia. What did you guys think of that match? I mean, I know. Natalia is a great wrestler, and she deserves a better push than what she's gotten over the past few years. But, I mean, as far as the, the way the match flowed and how it went, did you guys enjoy the match at all? You, did you care it was a double count out and they fought all the way to the back almost? Or what was your you, thoughts on it? You know, I, I like the match. Which you, know, you know what I thought about the whole time the match was going on? This is going to be a storyline for Total Divas. It's well. It's stemming from that to begin with, anyway. Already. Uh, yeah. So that, that it, it felt like that, and and, and the tire didn't. I mean, it could have. It was a good match. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. It was a good match. But the more Natalia kept talking, and then they showed Nikki Bella's family, and I'm like, God. The one thing I did not want to have happen was to cross the two shows. I didn't want. I didn't want my wrestling to cross over into Total Divas. And that's what they're doing. Well, do you want to hear something funnier than that? No. The word out, the word out <laughs> there is when they had the interview out there with her in the back, and Natalia jumped her in the back, and they got that powder thrown all on Maurice. That that's going to be the reason to lead up to the the, the match with John Cena and Nikki Bella versus the Miz and Maurice at WrestleMania. No, that that, that I swear to Christ, that better not happen at WrestleMania. That's what they're talking. And they, on top they, of that, they, on top of that, they, they're talking about a stupid match between AJ Styles and Shane McMahon. Dude, That's a waste uh, of AJ please. Styles. The, uh, why would you? Now, I mean, you know me, Chris, I, I, I'm not, I'm not one to complain about. Uh, well, I try not to. Well, I, I don't complain. I, we try, try not to. to I, it's hard not to I sometimes. But that I don't think should happen. It should not happen. They're no. leaning toward it. John Cena don't have the belt. He's not going to WrestleMania for the belt. He's not going to hey, get a rematch well, at WrestleMania. Well, well no. the, the night after the night after WrestleMania may be better than uh, than the actual show in some parts because the, here's what I, I I got thrown at me from our so-called reliable source. They only reliable because they say they are. But, uh, Nick Foley, you know, he's supposed to have surgery, hip surgery or something, right? Mm-hmm. So the new general manager of Raw will be. Da, da, you suck. Da, yeah, da. so I've been hearing that too. Yeah, so. Mm-hmm. Now, watch this Tuesday. Watch SmackDown. If you see any kind of confrontation or any comment from Maurice about that powder coming on her, then I think we're going to get the good uh, the good idea and thought that it's going to lead up to WrestleMania with them most likely. You'll have what is there? Is, is there is there one more pay per view for uh, SmackDown Raw. before reaching WrestleMania? Raw, no. Raw has Fastlane. It's just Raw with Fastlane, then WrestleMania, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Fastlane I, I kind of get the uh, Goldberg feeling Goldberg is going to win a Universal Title and face right. Raw at WrestleMania. <laughs> right. So I, I kind of got the feeling. I kind of got the feeling then that although it's not done between her and Natalia, I kind of think they're going to they're going to wear that out on television over the next month or so, and then you're going to see in the background little things happening here and there on SmackDown every Tuesday with leading up to the WrestleMania match with her and John Cena tag teaming against Maurice and The Miz. But, but the, the, the number they kept pushing in the next 72 days, they kept saying, they, they said that like 15,000 times. We got 72 days to WrestleMania. I'm like, oh. <laughs> That's the countdown. You gotta love the countdown. Is there any? Uh, well, look, we got see, we got 15 minutes left, basically 16 minutes. What was your favorite? Now, let's just say we pretty much can uh, assume the elimination chamber was the favorite match for everybody, except for Tim, who left a little while ago, and he didn't get to see all of it. But what was your favorite match of the night, hands down? Hands down, it was uh, 
And that, I mean, I mean, please, the, the elimination chamber, like that's it, game over. I mean, I, I, I hate to say it, but I got what I wanted, and uh, I, I will be happy with that. I was, but plus, it was just a great match, regardless. It was a really so let's do this. So let's do this. Let's say this. Let's say because we all pretty much agreed the elimination chamber match was the stuff. Let's take that match out altogether. That match being aside of all the remaining matches, what do you think in your mind was the best match of the night after that? Because they weren't all great. But they weren't mm-hmm. awful either. It, it, it was a pretty entertaining show of all. But if you take that match out, and like I said before, the the main the main people on that particular brand were in the elimination chamber match. My my match my favorite match would have been Naomi and um uh, Alexa Bliss. And it had no, we it, know it, why it, that was your favorite though. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like I said, the other matches were entertaining. I think I think the Nikki Bella match and and the Natalia match. I think, like I said, it had. Too much of a of a total diva storyline involved in it, and then Natalya did just a little too much talking during that match. And she, like her voice, is like when she's in the ring talking, it sounds so damn manly. Like she shouldn't be, like like, and then she don't know. It sounds like she's uncomfortable when she's saying what she's saying. Like you guys like Nikki Bella, huh? And I'm like, hm, shut up and wrestle. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. Does she sound like Nikki Bella? <laughs> Uh, no, nobody sounds like her. Come give nobody me a kiss, like And then the, uh, the, uh, the, the whole Dolph Ziggler thing, I'm like, like but it's kind of hard for me to believe you're a heel and you've got the American flag on your tights. Like, that's whole, that's not making any sense. And that's just me nitpicking. And then you yeah. do you do Kalisto in, into the, uh, the little uh, board or whatever, and he comes back and, and I just, that, that match is just, No. I wasn't even paying attention. I was barely paying attention to that match. Uh, it was it was entertaining, but like you know what you know what really messed that match up for me. And I think uh, KJ wrote it on Facebook when he wrote David O'Connor, would you please shut the fuck up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. Shut up. Listen to me. What was this? I had to, I had to ask this. What was the thank you Ziggler thing about? Because huh? they because he beat up Callisto. And he beat was, it because of, was it because of Callisto, or would he do it to Apollo Cruz? I think it was a combination of both. So are you? So Chuck, are you not an Apollo? Are you not a fan of Apollo Cruz anyway? Hmm. Are you not an Apollo Cruz fan? I mean, wasn't that your post on there? Oh, uh, it's not that. I like Apollo Cruz. I just how do I say? It? He smiles. I don't like much. Apollo. No, listen to me. Apollo Cruz needs to be a heel. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He needs to stop smiling. He's not getting into the kitchen. It's annoys me. Nobody can have that white teeth and smile like that. I'm like, whatever. Look, you know what he should have? He should have a certain kill shot uh, approach to him. I don't know who that is or what that means. But, um, <laughs> but I think I need somebody somebody that has that kind of just, just the... I don't know. I don't think he has that in him. I, do. I don't think he has it. I don't think... I do. If, if you listen to his interviews and listen to his backstory and, he, you know, the way he was brought up and he was brought up really, I don't think he has that. I don't think he can get to that place where he can just, you know what, I'm just going to come out and I'm going to do everything in my power to make you want to spit in my face. I don't think he has that in him. Really so then, then, so then, then, then teach him to be the smiley nerd even if he has a bow tie with glasses and he's smiling and everything, he gets in the ring and just kicks the shit out of people. But he's still he could be a he could be a, a heel that way. I'm just saying. I just think that's the that's another route. But if not, if he can find a way to get that out of him, I hate to say angry black man, but like you know what I mean. And he doesn't right. have to be nation of domination. He's just somebody that do. Oh, you, oh, you want to go all Samuel L. Jackson on us or something? I mean, what do you, what do you want him to do? If he has to, if he has to that, that use, was... if he has to use motherfucker every two sentences or every two words or sentences, I'm fine. Say Whatever it takes for him to stop smiling. <laughs> hey, oh, oh my God! God. Uh, I, what? I'll just <laughs> say what I am again. So, dude, I I'm so sick of that smile. I'm so sick of it. And he's very talented, but he's very generic. He's very like I don't know how to explain it. There's nothing. He, he comes down. I'm like, oh yeah, Paulo Cruz. What does he there's do? Nothing, nothing. There's, there's nothing he does that connects to me. I'm, I'm not gonna speak for everybody, but to me, there's nothing he does that makes me say, 
I want to hate him or I want to like him. I just see mm-hmm. a guy. I just see a guy who knows how to wrestle, and that's it. And just happy to be there. Cause yeah, I'm, like the, like the coming to America thing. I'm I'm very happy to be here. That's just that's him. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. Mike, Mike, yes, Chris. Mike, Mike, yes, Chris. Mike. What was your what was your match other than the Elimination Chamber that you thought would have been the second best match of the night? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Mojo Raleigh versus Kurt Hawkins. Oh, oh God, you went to Mojo. You went with Mojo. I no, can't I'm, just you Mojo. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just, it, it's, it's really uh, all the uh, Carmella segments because I know how much KJ loves her. No, 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 um, oh, God. Can I tell you how much I hated seriously. that tonight? Seriously. Between the pre-show and that crap they did with that, I hate, I despise that. What was the point? Just to get her on the airtime? Because the she's only, going the only good thing I the only good thing I can say about that is, you know, kudos to uh, Ellsworth. He's getting paid. He's living a dream, and that's the best I can say about that. Okay. But seriously, it would be uh, it would probably be Orton and Harper. It was a really good match. It was entertaining. I don't care what KJ says about the middle of it. That's classic Orton. Fuck you, KJ. Um, I right. didn't. I didn't even see it. What are you talking about? Oh, that was question, him. Mike? Never mind. Yeah. Can you, ask this, can you ask me this question? Why was Orton, like, what was the work with him posing, like, in the middle of the match? Like, what was that about? It's like not, saying you don't mean nothing to me. You're garbage. Why are you wrestling but, me? When I throw you out of the ring, I'm going to go pose to the crowd because I'm not worried about but, you behind I, the back. I wasn't sure. In the beginning, I thought maybe maybe something had happened with Harper on the apron, apron that was a little more real than it should have been, and... Orton was just giving him a little time to knock the cobwebs loose. But, but then, then the more, I, yeah. But then after he did it again, I thought, eh, it's, it's just, it's just Orton being cocky, and that's, it didn't really mm-hmm. make sense. But the rest of the match was good enough that I'll overlook it. But he's better. He's better than that, though. You know, Orton is one of like I, I'm a big ring psychology guy. Yeah, I hadn't figured that out yet. But he 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 knows he can do other stuff besides like. Posing like this random pose, it just seems random to me. Like, I know it's like you were, it's like when you're playing the first uh, SmackDown game on PS1 and you've got to do the <laughs> and you got to do the poses so you can get your finisher built up. Yes, yes, that's what he was doing. He was building his, he was building his finisher up. Yeah, he, he can't do he was, the RKO. Yeah. He's got to do uh, those poses yeah. and he's got to he get his whole going. It's like me, uh, throw you outside the ring, pose, 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 get you in the ring again, do a body slam, throw you back outside the ring, pose, 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 pose. Okay. Yeah, and get to the ring, RKO, I won. Yeah. And, and if I had to change something, the RKO would have been more dramatic. It wasn't dramatic enough for me because, no. you right. know, it's just like uh, he can be like, you know, taking a crap and reading the newspaper and uh, gargling and then all of a sudden hit you with the RKO. But this was just like, yeah, whatever, I'm only going to half-ass try. And, you know, mm-hmm. if I had to, um, if if I had to say one was my second favorite, and it's going to be that one as well. And I, and the whole posing thing to me was just, just him being Randy Orton, and basically giving the impression that Luke Harper wasn't a threat to him. He didn't feel. Like I don't care about you. You're nothing to me. I threw you out of the ring. I'm going to show off to everybody up here because I'm Randy Orton. I'm and a, I did I, really, I really, really no. enjoy that superplex off the top rope. That was really, that that. That was just a throwback, and I enjoyed it. We were the season. The thing with a suplex is it, it was done like early on in the show, so like that was like the third time I saw a suplex. Now, do you know what I'm not a fan of though? What I'm not a fan of is when they do this triple, triple uh, German suplex or triple power bomb off the top rope on mm-hmm. people. Like you got like yeah. one guy gets. There's two people climbing the rope to get one person in a in a superplex, and one guy comes up and gets one arm under each leg, and power bombs them two while they suplex the guy over. I mean that that's stuff just really stupid. That's, that's you, what you, you call it. This is awesome spot, Chris. Yeah, the, and, and, and you know who they need to do it. They need to have awesome spot. They, they need to have Luke Harper up there, and they need to have uh, uh, Corbin. Do it, getting ready to do the superplex, and then here comes Ellsworth with the with the power bomb. God, God. <laughs> Mike loves yep. Ellsworth. I, 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 I think Ellsworth. I think Ellsworth is is brilliant. It was a brilliant thing when they did it. Yeah. They saw this guy. He people kind of latched onto Ellsworth, like you know, a tick latches onto your dog. 
and the WWE and the WWE saw it and they said, "Man, we got to pay this guy a ridiculous amount of money to sit in the back next to Carmella <laughs> because I mean, who really wouldn't like that? Uh, so that he won't go out and make a bunch of money elsewhere. I'm, I'm, I'm happy he's getting to live the dream as much as he is, but I'm I'm kind of over Ellsworth like this. It's just kind of like I'm like, eh, okay, like it's like it's become, to me. He's he's become uh, Ricardo Rodriguez. He's the new guy back here. Who's the who's the what was the dude's name that would do the little cobra thing? Santino. Oh, Santino. He's the new Santino. That's what he is. They, they, after that whole AJ thing was over, they should have stuck him on Soul Fire Lab and let him actually wrestle. Yeah. It's, 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 it's not, him, and, not one seventy or not one oh five live. <laughs> Um, I mean, how many are actually close to 205 anyway? True. Do you like 205 hey, Live? Do you like that show, Ray? Hmm. Um, I like it as a play. It, I, I, you see, this, here's how I have my so-called man cave set up. I leave the network on while I play Madden. So it's kind of like background noise. It's like, you know, it's like ambiance. I don't really pay attention to it. It's just on. Thank you. Thank you. I, I haven't got into it. I haven't gotten into it as much as I thought I would. To be honest with you, uh, I'm, I'm glad Devil's on there. I mean, but I don't know. I mean, I'm having a hard time because the people to me are still just unknowns. I'm still trying to get a grip of who's on the show and what they are to the show and things like that. I mean, I get Rich Swan, I get T.J. Perkins, uh, of course I, Devil. I, I, I wish I, they'd I take hate Alicia Brian Fox off of it. I wish they take Alicia. I would. I wish somebody would pull a uh, Rikishi gimmick on Alicia Fox and yes. run her over the back. Just Please, no. Have him do what over. Brian Christopher said Rikishi did. Have him do that to her. And <laughs> oh my God! The real that, thing. I, I want, when two hundred five come on, I just want a shot of her wig laying in the parking lot somewhere, and somebody trying to figure out who ran her over. Uh, yeah. Listen. Uh, 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 I, of all I, the I people, don't. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to so say, I, of all the people on the show, I can't take the, the, the whole Englishman thing. They go a little oh, overboard with Gallagher. that. But, I mean, I don't have nothing against him, but they go a little overboard with the whole Englishman yeah, act. I mean, I it's know, good to I a know. point, but it's a little overboard with it. And then the Tony Neese looks like he could be somebody, but they don't give him a, enough of a, uh, of, of a push to the show to where – you know, he can be spotlighted a little bit more. But they got a few people no. that are trying to spotlight now. I think his turn may come around, and he's he's staying in the back of people's minds right now. But what's this oh, with well. Austin Aries? Is Austin Aries he's, ever going to wrestle on there, or is he just here to commentate? Yeah, he's his, clear. His, he's eyes, clear. His, his eye is still hanging out of his head, probably. Yeah, I just heard it was <laughs> – I heard he was clear. Oh, oh, by the way, glad for, I, I'm glad for, for everybody asking me what my – but my match was that uh, was second best. Thank you. Well, you said that. earlier. You said earlier you no, wouldn't I talk didn't. for twenty minutes, no, and you went back on and talked anyway. So I was holding you to your twenty-minute rule now. Dude, that was forty-five so. minutes ago, asshole. Okay, go <laughs> ahead. What, what was your second favorite match? You got two minutes and twenty-two seconds, sir. Uh, it's very simple. Um, the Mickey James match. To be quite honest, I was very surprised. Uh, that she wrestled as well as she did. Uh, I don't care who else she wrestled because, you know, I don't think that Becky Lynch is talented. So, um, nor do I give a shit about her. Uh, and I found that out last night, uh, tonight. You know, when you're just trying to pull for somebody, like, maybe, maybe, I'll give her a chance. You know, it's kind of like an abusive boyfriend. And you're like, yeah, I'll give her a chance. I'll give her a chance. And then she smacks the shit out of you with stupidity, and you're like, fuck that. So, tonight was the last night. I don't care. She, she, did good for, she did good for not having for, to wrestle for seven years, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. I was so pissed off. I hate I, – I really wanted – you know when there's like a movie and somehow a card comes and hits somebody and it doesn't hit anybody else? That's what I wanted to happen to fucking Daniel Tonga tonight. I wanted him to get hit by a bus and live. Fuck that uh, guy. Before, before y'all go, did anybody see what happened to JBO? Yes. Yeah, where he <laughs> fell down. Yes. Or just oh, down. That was, so that was awesome. The, the, event, the, the crowd could have chanted, this was awesome to that. That would not have been great. <laughs> yes. They're dicks. Absolutely. Well, hey, guys, we got like a minute uh, left to go, so we got to start wrapping stuff up, I guess. So, uh, Just so people who are listening out there, The Ray has been with us this week. Go listen to their show, yay. Robin Ray's Everything Wrestling Page. Great show. A lot of fun. Amazing show. 
Yep. Even even with the Kev in the mix, it's still a lot of fun, and I hope he hears that. Even with him there, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll pass that along. Make sure you pass that along for me. Make sure everybody you do follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And Mike, who do we not care about? Twitter. That's right. Thank you. Twitter. Twitter. We don't care about Twitter. Screw Twitter. Twitter. We're, not, we're done with Twitter. We're done with them. Mm-hmm. Right next <laughs> cloaca. It's hard. To, it's hard to get a follow on Twitter. Then they quit. They're quitters. That's why they call it Twitter because it rhymes with quitter. That's all I got to say about that. But no, seriously, show, uh, next week you have to show we'll be talking about Twitter for the followers. Yes, <laughs> we'll be just we'll be talking about I guess the weekend review next week. When we come back on. We may be able to swing a guest if I get lucky with it. I don't know for sure yet, but we'll see. In the meantime, Ray, come back with us anytime you want, and we'll talk to you all later. Have a good week. Thanks. New day, Rock. Thanks for having me.